Wow. I said I wasn't a troll, okay? We don't care, here's another one. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't care, here's another one. Whoa, guys, what? Finding new Pokemon, finding new gym leaders, new towns. Oh, man. <laughs> it's so fascinating. And then it's non canon It's real, really weird. Fuck okay, anyone who says otherwise. It's a classic. Oh it's a classic to me. Oh. To these, 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 these creatures. Uh, they're definitely some of the most interesting creatures. I've been infected, been infected. Infected on the man of us Infected Infected I created I created Pokemon was the last vestige of my childhood It's just super chill I see you I see you <laughs> You 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 true today oh, oh, like, <laughs> Let's go yeah. I'm invested oh, like, oh, like, like, like. Yes Oh my god Hi guys it's 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 Silf Radio Live. Hi, how is everybody? You can't well you can answer if there's anyone watching. Uh, I should hopefully be seeing you in the chat. I'm not seeing anyone in the chat, so if there is someone I was gonna say, if you're in the chat and I'm not seeing you, let me know. I'm just gonna assume there's no one in the chat. Uh, oh my god. Hi guys. Um Silf Radio Live. Uh with Andrew Spawn. <laughs> That's me. That's you. Uh, okay, whoa. Okay, somebody's here. I'm, um... There we go. <laughs> Maybe episode two will be a little more polished. Uh, this is my first time ever, ever doing something like this. I'm super excited. Uh, with me today... I have my good friend from Amusement Sparks pod podcast, Andrew Spawn. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Excited to be here on the live show. I'm a huge fan of Silf Radio, and hopefully this isn't a total uh, disaster. <laughs> You're a huge fan of Silf Radio and a huge part of Silf Radio. And, oh, shucks. And Thanks. I'm a huge fan of you. <laughs> um, wow. Wow. Uh, uh, if, if if there's anyone watching that isn't familiar, Silf Radio is a Pokemon podcast. We've been doing it for a good few years now. We're approaching episode 100. We'll be there soon. And uh, recently, I uh, um, how do how do I put this? I lost my fucking job, and so this is my job now. So it's a positive thing. I put a positive fucking spin on it, and. Uh, so I figured, what better time than now to try something new and creative and fun? So we're doing Self Radio Live. Gyarados Thug, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm wondering, is Gyarados Thug somebody that I know from our listener base? We'll see. Uh, so yeah, um, we're going to do a, hopefully a lot of interesting things on Self Radio Live. I really want to make it a... Um, uh, I want to make it as close to a variety show as I can and not just your average Twitch stream. So, hopefully we'll be doing some cool things. Uh, yeah. Um, so, we're going to be playing to start it out. It's Keith. Hey, what's up, Keith? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Keith also just recently joined our Patreon, so he gets, like, bonus fucking points. Um, <laughs> I don't know what we... I don't know if we do something. Usually, people do something like that on live streams. I don't. I don't. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. All right. Uh, so we're gonna be we're gonna be playing uh, a playthrough of Leaf Green for this uh, for this live stream series, at least to start off. I'm thinking I've got some other ideas to follow there, but we will be breaking that up throughout with. Uh, you know, other games and um, other cool, interesting things. We'll be watching videos and stuff like that. Andrew. Yes, sir. You played Leaf Green? Uh, yeah, I'm a, a big fan of that whole generation in those first 
remakes really blew my mind because it was like man it feels like it was just a few years ago but you go back and play them it's like man it has been a while since you know andrew, game boy andrew the various buttons will be explained in order of their importance can you shut up for like two seconds you've been talking <laughs> sorry. i was talking whole, right over that you've been talking this whole podcast <laughs> i'm so sorry guys i'm just so <laughs> nervous i kid i kid um i figured Ah, uh, all right. This is exciting. So wait, yeah, did you have leaf green or fire red or both? Um, hmm. I think fire red. I knew I, I got red version. That was my first game. And then I got blue version. And then I got yellow version. Um, and then silver and gold. And then I think um, sapphire and then uh, <laughs> fire red. Yeah, yeah. So okay. definitely. I never had leaf green. Okay. But, so uh, are you a fire red person? I guess. I don't identify that strongly with it necessarily, but I do like that generation. Okay. Well, no, no. I love the generation, but I mean, if there were two types of people in the world, fire mm. red people and leaf green people, which one are you? I guess I'm more of a leaf green person, but I think I just felt bound to uh, that original game I got, which was red version. Had to okay. represent. Yeah. Uh, also in the chat, let us know if there's anything off or weird about our levels. If one of us is louder than the other, uh, if the music's too loud at any point. Um, like I said, I'm new to this, so I'll be fine-tuning this as we go. I, I intended the intro to be a lot more smooth, and I dropped the ball. But <laughs> uh, People affectionately refer to Professor Oak as the Pokemon Professor. I, it's actually Who's talking right now? What's that? Who's talking? Is that the voice of God? I always oh. thought this was Professor Oak talking. Oh, yes. Well, he says they affectionately refer to him as the Pokemon Professor. Oh. Yeah. Yep. He uses the first person pronoun. That's just a weird way to say that. People affectionately... Like, he is that a humble brag? That's just a regular yeah. brag. <laughs> so weird. If you, it's not even like, I'm Nathan, but my friends call me Shaggy. It's like... Right. <laughs> my friends affectionately... <laughs> My fans bow also, down to me. Also, could you imagine going to school and uh, or go, like going to college, your first day at college, and it's like, "Hi guys, my name's uh, my name's Mr. Carver," uh, but people affectionately refer to me as the biology professor. <laughs> like, Maybe he's being like playful, like he's I don't know. It just sounds weird. It's just your job title. Yeah. This world. For some people, Pokemon are pets. I'll use them for battling. As for myself. Uh, so today, we're not just going to be uh, aimlessly talking about the game as we play it. Although we are going to be doing a lot of that. <laughs> I thought it would be fun if we reviewed the uh, first, first volume of the manga. So we're going to do that in a little bit. Uh, so... Stay tuned for that. That's something we've been wanting to talk about on the podcast for a long time. And uh, it's going to be cool to get into that. Oh, God. Oh, God. I wasn't ready for an existential fucking crisis today. <laughs> the binary. Hashtag triggered. Mm -hmm. um, oh, thank you. Uh, what do you guys say? Am I a boy or a girl? Assign me a gender. No? What, um, a girl is something different, at least. A girl is something different? <laughs> Did you just assume my gender, Andrew? Oh, uh, no, I mean, it's different than me. That's not that's cool. Awesome. Uh, uh, did you just assume my gender jokes aren't cool, are they? I don't know. I feel like that's really outdated. I feel like that's really, like, 2011. Like It, it does raise... It starts a conversation, though, I guess, about gender and what that means. And Alright, what's my name? Um... I name, I've named myself in every game that I've played, and I am the show host. I don't want to just, like, uh, shirk my responsibility. But I think it would be cool if... Uh, I don't think it would be right for you guys to not take part in this a little bit. Uh, Keith, Andrew, Nathan. Is there... What, what would be, like, a combination of all... Oh, shoot. Of all three of our names. That's going to go somewhere weird, I think. <clears throat> Can... Can Thu? <laughs> oh, can. Nah. Uh, 
Dika Blue. Dika Blue. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's cute. Uh, how about um? Because uh, we had because there was sweet Dika Blue. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think. Do we want to go Dika Blue or do we want to just do D? I want to just go with D, if that's cool with you, because Dika Blue makes me think it's a Pokemon. So I just want to separate that, and we're going to go D, in honor of Dika Blue. What's wrong with being a Pokemon? What are you implying? Um, nothing. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure. Alright. Alright. Oh, my grandson. Sent Sent Sentinel! What's going on, Sentinel89? Thank you, we're super excited too. I'm fucking super excited to have you. Uh, Alright, grandson. He's been your rival since you were babies. Um, what was his name now? I, I... Wait. Let's analyze that for a minute. He's been my rival since we were babies? I don't know if babies have it in them to be rivals. I do think it's more of a thing in Japanese culture to have rivals, but still, probably not babies. Okay, yeah, I don't know. right. I'm like, did their parents sort of like, are their parents instigators that have been instigating this rivalry this whole time? Yeah, no, for sure. It, or also, hmm, this piece right here, what is his name now? What if he changes his name a lot? Uh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I don't, um... That's a way of explaining it away, like that... Professor Oak at one point knew his grandson's name, but his grandson doesn't go oh, by that name anymore. I see what you're saying. He's like, yeah. what was his name now? I, I can't keep up with these Gen Zers. He keeps changing it, yeah. <laughs> um, oh my god, that's what's been going on this whole time. It's, okay, it's not, okay. It's just that the Pokemon world, we've long known that the Pokemon world is far more progressive than our own. Like, that's, that's been generally understood for a long time. Like, look at their environmental, like, their relation with their environment, like, uh, the way they treat each other, like, they barely have a need for a police force, let alone, like, like corruption in a police force. Um, and just their, you know, like, social policies, the way they treat each other, how they're accepting of people of different kinds and types, and, and, uh, Pokemon. Um... So it's just that the Pokemon universe was so far um, ahead of us in wokeness, and Professor Oak is is just like he's you know the old bumbling like boomer who doesn't who can't keep up, and he's like, I, I, are you a boy or a girl? What, what, what's your name again? Like he just can't keep up with these Gen Zers and their identity politics. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, we'd have to check the original red and blue or red and green version, I guess, to see if it's phrased that same way of what was his name now. Then that could really be a solution. Oh, I, I like he, that explanation. Did he actually say the word now in there? I don't know. Oh, I'll look it up. He did in this version in Leaf Green, yeah. Uh, was it Ch Charles? Yes, it was Charles. That's right, I remember now. His name was Charles. Their name was Charles, Grandpa. Right. <laughs> Fuck. We've been over this. Uh, D. Your very own Pokemon legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures with Pokemon awaits. Let's go. All right, let's do this. Cute hat, D. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I Like I said, I, th I feel like... <laughs> People, I feel like people got style in the Pokemon universe. Um, Alright, they're first things first. Uh, I used to always name my Charmander Charles. Oh, that's a good name for a Charmander, and I'm actually very surprised that that never like occurred to me. The oh. original text was, "What's his name again?" Oh, so. because he went back. Like, to his he goes back and forth, maybe. Uh, withdraw that potion. Um, also, props to me. I hadn't tested it out, but I needed to pick a new text color because it was not working during our test run. And, uh, pink was a good choice. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. For um, sure. Also... Interesting that this was this was on the Game Boy Advance, and she's playing the NES and not the SNES. 
Or the N64. Or N64, yeah. Or the that Game is interesting. Cube. Yeah. Hmm. So I guess they weren't ahead of us at all. Aspects. Or they want it to be an old console. It's like, they're not implying that you're really wealthy or anything. It's just, Hashtag you have a trigger. video game. It said so on TV. <laughs> all girls dream of traveling. It said so on TV. <laughs> Mom, I cannot wait to get the fuck out of Pallet Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mom was never a girl. She's she doesn't know what it's like. Um, Pallet Town. So, oh wait, what movie is this? A girl with her pigtails is walking up a brick road. Oh, it's Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's wonderful because it's um, Stand by Me in the original Red and Blue. Which is, mm -hmm. that's weird for it to be a Stephen King movie. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, like a movie where they find a dead body. Wizard of Oz is such a better choice. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, and look at all the yellow bricks in the, the house right here. And you're about to go on a journey, collecting different types of creature friends. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, the way that the different um, towns are all color based and you've read the wizard of oz right yeah I, I read i think the first two novels on your recommendation oh you gotta read the other nine or <laughs> ten or eleven i think there's like 29 others or something well there's there's somewhere between 11 and 13 depending on what you count by frank uh, by l frank Baum, and mm -hmm. then there's um there's uh there's uh sorry i'm spacing out i'm like i'm not paying attention to these people ah, fuck these people um and then there's uh he passed the torch on to ruth plumley thompson who wrote like 29 books or something hmm. and then she passed the torch on to somebody and then i think it went public domain after them interesting yes there's another yellow brick building huh a yellow brick building oh yeah this um, one here yeah so, um, what do you think of, um, Pallet Town? Like, what, what are your thoughts about Pallet Town? Like, uh, I feel like you're one of the only people I don't have to qualify that question. Most people <laughs> I, would be like, what do you mean, what do I, I don't know, it's the town you started in Pokemon. Uh, I think the name is a little weird, but, uh, I like the layout of it. I like how peaceful and serene it is. I love that there's always a little body of water that you don't know what to do with and you just assume is for environmental like just decoration but uh so it's a cool reveal you know once you have surf coming back or even once you have the fishing rod to be like whoa i can actually interact with this body of water uh but you know it was the first thing any of us saw of pokemon right unless you started with the the show or something uh so i don't know there's a big important connection for me at least sure, like i was yeah. blown away i remember you know the in the original games when Professor Oak is talking and it shows like that little pixelated sprite version of your character and then you shrink down to the little chibi field sprite that we see here. Yes. Um, that blew my mind. Like, And then coming out into the full world and it's all that little tiny like toy universe and art style. I just loved it. So uh, my first time seeing you know, the, the bedroom and Pallet Town was just amazing and I fell in love with the art style right away. Huge fan. I, uh... Yeah, I've got I've got a lot of interesting thoughts on Pallet Town. So its identity is obviously unique in any of the like Kanto towns. It, uh, it and Lavender Town are both really similar for having uh, they don't have a gym. They seem to be much smaller settlements. And I oops. And uh, they they seem to be. Um, yeah, smaller settlements that don't seem to be as big a deal. And I sort of think of Pallet Town. So, like, I, I see Lavender Town as, like, a settlement that formed around the Pokemon Tower. The Pokemon Tower was constructed, and there were people that were there to build it. There were people that were there for maintenance. There were probably, like, I don't know, like, if there are religious officials or, like, anything like that that are there for, like, the funeral ceremonies or whatnot that might go on and so like a small like town develops around it and with pallet town the way i sort of see it is it's um professor oak 
came here to start his laboratory and that the, the town is sort of like the settlement that was founded by the families that traveled here to work with Professor Oak. So like these other guys down in the bottom uh, section of the lab walking around, like they have families that all moved here to Pallet Town. And uh, I've always sort of had this kind of headcanon where it's almost like it's called Pallet Town because there were different uh, houses of, like, by houses I mean, like, you know how there's, like, different families, like, can be known as different houses, you know? Yeah, so like they're... a generational... Yeah. Yeah, and so there could be, like, the House of Red, the House of Blue, the House of Green, and that that's almost like a family name, but maybe it's not a family name in the same way as we know them in, in America or Japan, but maybe in the Pokemon universe it works kind of differently, like everything seems to. And so Red has his family name, and maybe his mom doesn't. Maybe Professor Oak doesn't have his family name, which is Blue or something, but Blue does. I don't know. Yeah, I like that. Like, it's just a traditional thing. Like, sometimes you name your baby your house color, and sometimes you don't. Or it could be a nickname. Maybe his birth name's not Blue or Red. Right. But maybe it's just kind of a nickname. The fact that he is going out to represent hit the house of blue like he's going out into the world to go on his pokemon journey oh yeah that's true that's pretty cool i like that that theory that this is like a, a company town almost like where they'll build a factory and then build a town and everyone who works in the factory lives in the town it, it's kind of cool i like that and that kind of fits in the vibe of pokemon which seems at once kind of more feudal but also more sci-fi so it's kind of a cool, I don't know, hybrid of, I don't know, how our culture is not. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. which is Pokemon to a T. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I see uh, Keith is recommending we go with Squirtle, which I was actually already thinking I wanted to go with Squirtle, but I was going to defer to the, the, the group think. Um, it's a tie right now, gang. Uh, that's your favorite type, so are we all in agreement that we're going with Squirtle? Ooh, second end on Squirtle. Okay. I think we're, we're not going to hurt any feelings if we go Squirtle. Yeah, well, are you in, Andrew? Oh, 100%. In? Yeah, Squirtle is my favorite starter. I figured it's the middle of the line one. Um, if mm -hmm. you've got Bulbasaur's easy, Squirtle's um, medium, and Charmander's hard. And then it's <laughs> also just sort of the... Sorry. Charmander's the really cool one. Bulbasaur's the really lame one, and I don't, I don't think that. I think Bulbasaur's really cool, but there, there's still some kind of like dynamic like that, you know, like Bulbasaur's the underdog, Char, Charmander's the, uh, whatever you'd call the opposite of the overdog. Underdog. The overdog. <laughs> Isn't there a word for that in like horse racing or something, like the top pick or something? I don't. I don't the know. fastest horse. The... Oh. And the in winner. honor of the podcast today, I wore my Pokemon Starters shirt. Hey! Yeah. I really love how it matches with this plaid. So, uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. That's a cool shirt. This Actually, this shirt's pretty cool, too. This is a local bar that went out of business from COVID, but I really love it. But they, <sighs> they always air um, wrestling events there, and they're always playing metal. And just the characters they designed for the shirt are so cool. They're like kind of look like He-Man characters, but they're made up like oh there's a two-headed dude and like this weird skull man. Yes, yeah, they Big totally fan. have that like '80s toy vibe. Yeah, it was such a cool bar. It's tragic they had so much good vegan food and cheap drinks and just random types of metal and punk playing all the time. And it was always fun to like take my grandma there because you know she's. 78 years old and is like a total like yoga lady but she loves that place just because the food is so good and like because my wife and i love it so much so she'd be in there all the time it was great uh sentinel sentinel red i guess i'm gonna i'm gonna call you red unless you give me something else but uh, i think it's red. a family name <laughs> yeah if, <laughs> if if it's okay with you i'm going to call you by your family name uh Red's saying that uh, Bulbasaur is his favorite, but Squirtle's a close second. And uh, Keith is saying that Water's the best type. Uh, I, I 
Bul I don't have a favorite out of the three original original starters, but Bulbasaur is my go-to. So I definitely I want you to know that I wasn't knocking Bulbasaur um, <laughs> by calling him the underdog or the the lame one. Um, water's best type. Hey Andrew, you guys team I know. over here. We sure are. Uh, yeah, that's exciting. I do love the design of Bulbasaur though. Like, uh, just I don't know. I had a Bulbasaur pencil sharpener. I don't know where these came from, but I had like a little set of like school supplies in like fifth grade or something. And there was Bulbasaur, you could like stick a pencil in his bulb and there was a sharpener and the bulb would come out if you needed to empty the shavings. <laughs> oh my okay. God. I love that. The, I'm learning so much that that bulb can do that I didn't know before, <laughs> especially with this manga. Um, right? So I'm texting Andre right now uh, about this. Uh, so... I know you love water type, and uh, so does the chat. Uh, let's see, grass, ground, and steel from red. Um, cool. That's a that's a great uh, combination that goes really well together. Like grass, ground, and steel. There's something to that. Sure. Uh, uh, I'm I'm just picturing like Granddad from the Boondocks, like <laughs> like you bet your ass there's something to that, and I get out there and mow the lawn. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I'm texting Andre right now to ask him what the best type is because I dark is my favorite type, but I wouldn't argue that it's the best type. And I'm hmm. curious, and I don't want to Google it. I want to ask our expert what his opinion is. Hey, Am man. Am I the expert? <laughs> Sylph Radio Live and oh. I would like to know what, <laughs> what is, best, is type? best type. Depends on the generation, maybe. Um, In the greatest generation. Say overall. See, it was you're, probably psychic. <laughs> I was about to say psychic. If you're asking me from a, um, not a gameplay perspective necessarily, but just from a broad perspective of the universe, I think I'd go psychic or dragon, mm -hmm. maybe. Those are both super cool. Um,. All right, best must be fairy. Okay, I like fairy type. I don't know if that was uh, if that was sarcasm or if that was legit, but it can beat it can beat dragons. Um, what are we gonna? You know what I wish? I really wish that they told you the nature of the Pokemon when you named it, mm. because that would make it so much better. Like for coming up with a name. Uh, yeah. At the same time, I guess you don't get that option when you get a pet, but. Hmm. That is a good point, though. Then you could be more like, you could tailor the name to that actual Pokemon and their, their vibe more. Right. Well, we got a male Squirtle. Um, let's see. Sarcasm. They resist so many types. They are super effective against dragons. Yeah, which is um, cool. Yeah. Because dragons in mythology just seem like the the ultimate, you know. And then it's like, uh, yeah, but a fairy can take them down, which is really cool. And I think it's cool that it, it gives an edge to the cute Pokemon too. Like not really? all cute Pokemon, but it gives <laughs> it gives an edge to a bunch of cute Pokemon. Yeah. Um, Squirtle. I'm gonna name Squirtle um, September. Cute. Does everybody like that? Everyone vibing with that? I can only speak for myself, but yes. I really like names that are like that. I don't know where. Maybe it's somewhat common to have a name of like June or May, but the other months seem to be off limits for some reason. Right. Well, I started thinking. I always like. I always take the naming really seriously. Like I said, I'll catch an Ekans I'm never gonna use, and I'll. Uh, I, I'll sit. I'll. I've left my Game Boy Advance like closed on pause, like on the naming screen for like two days before because I couldn't think of a name. I'll like start Wikipedia-ing like mythological snake deities and like all sorts of stuff. Um, yes, bad Green Day joke. What was the, I think Billy Joe had a tweet this year that was like, don't wake me up when September ends or something. Like, wake me up when 2020 ends, that's what it was. Okay. Oh yeah, but then I started thinking alliteration. So I was thinking S sounds and then I was thinking something um, notable and relevant here. So. Yeah, it is September 8th. September. Rival September. Charles. September. At least in our time zone, it's September. 
<laughs> yep. In our reality. Oh, that's a cute mobile source sprite. So I'm curious. I want to know from you, Andrew, and from everyone in the chat. Honest answers only. No judgment. I, I'm not... I know I have a reputation for being like a hater <laughs> against the anime. I'm not oh, a hater yeah. against the anime. I am reformed. And I've never been a hater against the anime fans. But I'm curious. When you see that rival character, I want to know um, if... When you see them and your brain goes to what is this character's name, what is the first name that you think? Is it Gary, Blue, or Green? Probably Gary. Okay. And I'm curious... Uh, I the, think because uh, in the game you get to choose his name, so it didn't seem like it was defined in canon until I saw the show. Okay. But yeah, but I'm curious. I don't really remember which piece of media I was exposed to first. I think I got the cards first and then the video game and then saw the show, but I don't exactly remember. Um, uh, I think we all know what mine is, is green. I mean, is, is blue. I'm, I gotta get used to like focusing on the game and talking at the same time. <laughs> uh, I did it fine with pinball. I did like a test run uh, just playing pinball, not streaming, just by myself and like talking. <laughs> um, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. And I did fine with that. Uh, Pokemon pinball or like regular pedestrian mm. pinball? This is why I did fine with that because I didn't have to listen to somebody. That's evidenced <laughs> by the fact that I didn't respond to the question you just asked me. Uh, <laughs> um, what do you mean, like an actual pinball machine? Oh, I mean, were you playing Pokemon Pinball, or were you playing some other pinball? Oh, yes, Pokemon Pinball, not Pedestrian Pinball, yes. I love Pokemon Pinball, it's such a cool game. I gotta say, though, um, have you ever played Pedestrian Pinball? <laughs> I don't actually know what that is, but I just meant, like... It's very uh... violent, uh, <laughs> it's very illegal. Oh, you're running, okay, I, yeah, the pedestrians are on the field, and there's a giant <laughs> steel ball rolling them over. Rival's name is Asphart. Zest Bomb! Hey, what's up, man? Um, um, hold on, Zest Bomb. I know who you. Oh shoot, what did I just? I know who you are because you're always hitting us up on Instagram, and then you told me that you're someone else that's always hitting us up on Facebook. Uh, and I'm trying to connect the dots here because my brain it does things but <laughs> so happy to fucking see you guys here i'm so happy like i'm so fucking happy to see uh people that i recognize in the chat like this is awesome uh thank you so much for making it guys like this really means the world to me uh i still would have had a blast if nobody showed up but like i'm gonna i'm gonna go to bed tonight feeling good about myself tmi Well, no, TMI would have been, I'm going to go to bed tonight feeling good about you guys. <laughs> Which is more innocent and much less innocent all at once. <laughs> hey, congratulations on your first victory just now. That was awesome. Yeah. I also, I think the first time I ever played, you know, I didn't know that uh, Tail Whip was not a great move or Growl was not a great move. So I think I lost my very first rival fight, and then I was like, oh, okay, I see how you are, game. Like, you can lose the first, like, tutorial fight. That's pretty for real. So it, it earned my respect in that moment of like, okay, I'm going to need to train. This yeah. isn't a walk in the park. I think uh, Charles is having a very similar experience right now, <laughs> trying to say, I picked the wrong Pokemon. No. No, Charles, try a new excuse. Was your controller broken? Because you definitely had the type advantage over me. Uh, how far am I planning on going for this stream? We talked about this before stream. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, realistically, I have a few stopping points in mind, and we're going to adjust based on how this ends up playing out. Uh, I was thinking maybe like two hours, but I might cut short. 
I, and who knows, I might even want to go longer. I was thinking maybe once we get to Pewter City, but I don't know. Uh, we're also uh, going to be doing some things aside from playing the stream. We're going to be doing, um, as, I, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, we're going to be doing a review of Pokemon Adventures here in a little bit. We're going to start that. Uh, and we're going to take a look at uh, Pokemon Power, which was one of my introductions to Pokemon. And I'm really no looking way. forward. Yeah, that's going to be I fun. didn't know that. That's really cool. I, I had never heard of it until you texted me about it the other day. Sweet. It was my second. It wasn't the very first exposure to Pokemon I had, but it was the first um, substantial exposure to Pokemon that I had. Wow. Um, Nathan, you probably don't remember, but I messaged you forever ago on Facebook Messenger. Been listening since almost the beginning. That's wow. awesome. I'm sure I, I'm sure I remember. Um, just shoot me a message on Facebook again. You don't have to dox yourself on stream, but uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I'll check that out later. Uh, fucking, I appreciate you guys so much. Like that's that's the coolest thing in the world. Like I really love that you guys love the show. Um, all right. D, Gramps, smell you later. <laughs> that is an iconic line. Not if I smell you first. Oh, wait, uh, does, uh, <laughs> Professor Oak doesn't give you anything, right? He just tells you to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, man. It is kind of a fun way to go through talking about the manga to, like, compare beats with the games, kind of. Like, I think that's a cool, casual way of going about it. And I'm trying to pull up Pokemon Power on my phone. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just trying to find where this file is. Hmm. Oh, oh, that's okay. Well, I mean, I am going to be pulling it up for us to look at on the stream. Oh, cool. We do that. Well, then never mind. Sweet. Yeah. So, uh, Pokemon Power was a... Um, in So, basically... My first exposure to Pokemon, and I thought about trying to find this too, and I've, I could have found this and I didn't, but we'll do it on a later stream. It, I know it would have been fitting to do it in the first episode, but whatever. Um, Pokemon, uh, my first exposure, as I've talked about before, was in an expose in Nintendo Power about um, Space World 97, I think, because um, it was before Pokemon came out here. And uh, I um and it, and I saw a few things in there. I saw a picture from Hey You Pikachu, so a little CG animated Pikachu. I saw a person in a Poliwhirl costume at like a Japanese theme park. Uh, is Poliwhirl your favorite Pokemon? Uh, one of them, especially early on. Yeah, I like Poliwhirl a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just so iconic. It is an yeah. iconic Pokemon. It is. Uh, in the manga, that's, I think, Red's first Pokemon. Yes. Pretty um, cool. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into that here in a second. Um, mm -hmm. They, uh, oh, they give me a potion, don't they? Get your ass over here. Um, so, that, and then there was also a picture from Pokemon Stadium, the original Pokemon Stadium, which never came out here. Our Pokemon Stadium was actually Pokemon Stadium 2. Uh... And uh, it showed Char Charizard and Blastoise fighting. So those were the first Pokemon I ever saw, were Pikachu, Poliwhirl, Charizard, and Blastoise. Cool. And Oh, and there was actually a screenshot from Gold and Silver. It was very early before Gold and Silver had uh, come out, but there was a shot that showed the tower where Ho-Oh resurrected the, the legendary beasts. Wow. Yeah, and then, then I was it, it had described um, Pokemon as uh, Tamagotchi meets Final Fantasy, and I was like, I'm in, I'm in for life. Yes, that's amazing. I was like, when I'm 35, I'm going to be doing a podcast on this. Dude, what if you had started the podcast right then? <laughs> that'd be so cool. <laughs> that'd be that'd be great. Oh. Uh, hold on, let me move up so I can read this. A friend of mine had blue. Position myself so I can better read it. <laughs> <laughs> had blue and some cards, and I was hooked immediately. Yeah, I was uh, like telling my... So my friend got the game before I did, because I didn't have no money, and his parents were more likely to spoil him. So uh, 
he, uh, when he finally got the game, was like, come down, I got the game. But Pokemon Power uh, was a thing that they ran in Nintendo Power before the game came out that was a strategy guide in installments. And then it would also have uh, a manga at the back, which was just basically composed from screenshots from the anime. Like a, so it was a comic book, not a manga. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we could take a look at that actually right now. Um, Pokemon Power was super fucking cool. So, uh, Andrew, are you are you watching along on yeah. the screen there? Can you? Can I we see, see it. it. Everybody see it all right? So we yeah, need some tips on how to get through this game. <laughs> right. Uh, I have I have Pokemon Power sitting right up on a shelf in front of me. Torn oh. to shit. I could go get it and show you the actual copy if you want to see That's the cover with some wear and tear. Just beautiful. I love the kind of like uh, really kind of weird art style, but almost like watercolors, but really more extreme. Yeah, it's that early it's Ken Sugimori art. And this yeah. was my first exposure to the Sugimori artwork. I didn't see any of the Sugimori art. So, like, I spent all the time before this came out just. Oh, so excited to see more about Pokemon. It said there were 150 monsters that I'd only seen one, two, three, four of them. Um, oh, there was a picture of Squirtle also. So I had seen five. And I don't remember. Then here's I... two more. Like, you know, you see this. Where did you see this magazine? Like, was this at the newsstand? Like, at comic book store or where? No, it came in Nintendo um... Power. And it was... Um... It, it was situated like this. Like, so here's Nintendo Power Magazine. And then, let's see, I've got to have like a thinner magazine here, actually. <laughs> so I can just go all the way with the example. Uh, of course, I don't have I to can't wait. Books. Comic books. All I right. feel like I'm really there. So you got the Pokemon Power opens this way. The magazine opens this way. It's very important. Like you guys wouldn't understand. It wouldn't. You wouldn't appreciate looking at it if I didn't go this in depth. Or maybe it's just my OCD. So it would actually be in there like this, so that like the side that opened was seal sealed in, so that like when you opened it up, this was the spine of Pokemon Power, and you would cut it out of the magazine. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've seen those little inserts. Um, I think Pojo's unofficial collector magazine series always had posters like that. Mm -hmm. Did you ever subscribe to those magazines? Like, there was a Pokemon one, there was a Dragon Ball Z one, maybe a Yu-Gi-Oh one. Those bootleg-ass fucking magazines. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I loved those. And, like, the posters were always unofficial art. Like, they didn't quite look as cool as the actual show, but it was... It was a poster, and that was the only way I was going to get a poster from Pokemon or Dragon Ball Z or whatever. Oh, hold on. Let me see. I'm not keeping up with the chat here. First time I saw Pokemon was in the back of Lunchables when the original first 150 came to us. <laughs> That's fucking great. Was it when they had the um, cutout cards that you could cut out of the back? Oh, I remember Lunchables? that. Oh, oh man. <laughs> what does this next thing in the chat say? Um... Let's see if I can get a better. <laughs> My first seeing the other kids in the playground with Pokemon cards. Oh, yeah, that's fucking great, too. Um, I just got to play the hipster who was like, I was the first person I knew who knew Pokemon. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's that's no, it's it's fucking wonderful. Like that's it really was awesome. Um you know, I mean, I feel like when we grew up, so many things were more um, ubiquitous. Like, everybody liked X-Men, everyone liked Power Rangers, everyone liked Ninja Turtles, or whatever your generational thing was. And the further you got into the internet, maybe, the, the more that separated out. But Pokemon, I, f I really feel like Pokemon was the first thing since Star Wars to sort of achieve Star Wars level, like, fandom, you know? Right, and we weren't even around for the beginning of Star Wars fandom, but we were there for the beginning of Pokemon, and it was it was huge. Yeah, it was so cool. Like even the like most popular girl in class was into Pokemon. It's like I never would have seen that coming. Oh, that's I, great. I, I fucking love it. Um, got a Jigglypuff and Clefairy down here. <sighs> got a map of the world of Pokemon, and so this is what they'll be covering in the first issue of uh, 
of Pokemon Power. I'm sure we won't get that far in this episode. Uh, now, this is great, though, because it would always start with the Pokemon Times, um, which is just so wow. fucking wonderful. Saturday, Ugh. August 1st, 1998, 75 degrees and sunny. Gotta catch them all. That would have been so cool to work on back then. Like, these guys really were in on the ground floor of Pokemon's popularity. They're like, yeah, you know, I wrote the first issue of Pokemon or Pokemon Power. Ah, <laughs> oh, and I love it too because it gives you a peek into like the um before Pokemon was so defined when they were still sort of like fleshing out what exactly Pokemon was. So like this news article here, it's like it's first it says Pallet Town, which I fucking love because like um also I'm sorry if I'm not keeping up with the chat while I'm reading this. Uh um uh no Pokemon in Florida. Not in Florida in the mid to late nineties. Just us nerds. <laughs> Just us nerds. Oh, yeah, I uh the the girls weren't into Pokemon in my uh school either, if I can broadly generalize generalize. Um uh and yeah, that was always something that I've mentioned this before too, that it always like bothered me that like sometimes my sister would be like, I don't like Pokemon, it's for boys. And I'd be like, "Like, look at that! Look at that! What's not to like about that?" Mm -hmm. The oh, I'm pointing the wrong way. That, that, there. Right. Not if you're gonna follow myself. traditional gender norms, then here's some of those for you. Right. And uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and also Peg, like 30 year old Peg, would like to have a word with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nine-year-old peg um how dare you be wrong about something as a child uh peg's my sister but no this is really interesting so like pallet town citizens are being warned to be cautious when traveling outside the city the wild pokemon population is rising and experts are at a loss to explain why it's not unusual to see their numbers rise and fall over time, said Professor Oak, the world's foremost authority on Pokemon. But this sudden boom is quite unusual. Professor Oak said that, more po that the Pokemon are also becoming more aggressive, and he urges travelers to stay away from grassy areas where wild Pokemon live. One person who will not be following the good doctor's advice is Gary. The professor... Uh, excuse me. Is who? His name's Blue is Blue, Professor Oak's grandson. Professor Oak's own grandson. This is a good chance to add to my collection, he said. I want to show the world I can collect all 150 Pokemon. The young man's ultimate goal is to be the greatest Pokemon trainer of all time. I'm going to beat everyone, he insisted, including my wimpy neighbor, Ash. Only time will tell which of these rivals will, rivals will come out on top. Professor Oak has noted a dramatic increase in the Pokemon population in the area between Pallet Town and Cerulean City. Fossil exhibit opens. Look how huge those trees are. Like, a map of, like, even a town in the United States, you can't actually see <laughs> individual trees on the map. Right, the Pokemon that's universe. A, Viridian I guess Forest. that's an artist's rendering. No, it's literally as small as it appears in the game. <laughs> there literally are only that many buildings in Saffron City. Is that Saffron? No. It looks like... Uh, I don't know what it looks Hold like. On, we got... yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's not get hung up on this. I like this. <laughs> Some scientists say that cloned. Some scientists say they have cloned new Pokemon from fossils, but most experts think this claim is hogwash. <laughs> Just go to Cinnabar Island. <laughs> Don't any of you have surf or f fly? No, none of them are the chosen one. These are just uh, people working in a newspaper. Just like the swallows returning to Capistrano. Swallows? There's swallows in this universe. The Geodudes are making their yearly migration to Mount Moon. I always thought Geodudes just kind of lived in Mount Moon. Call me crazy, but. Hmm. If you'd like to capture one, remember that they are especially vulnerable to water and grass. And look at this. Bike blowout. Uh, only one million dollars. <laughs> Sweet. Rare candy. Look for it at your local supermarket. Uh, yeah. So, Neat. so here's my first look at the video game. And I'm reading all this about like what it's going to be like to play this game before I ever can. I get to see these three and start Man. thinking like... I don't know which one I want to choose. I don't know which one I want to choose. 
Like, oh my god, so exciting. Uh, Look at the numbers. There's a misprint there. Where? In the last page? Yeah. Oh, right here? There's two one. number one Pokemon. Womp, womp, womp. Uh huh. And then remember this old picture of Pidgey that makes it look like totally different than it actually yeah, looks? Yeah, that is a really strange picture. Yeah. Got your Sugimori art on the PC. Uh,. Again, like, so these were, this was my first look at, like, oh my god, I'm finally starting to see more Pokemon and, like, what their names are. And, like, it doesn't even show me yet what Metapod or Kakuna evolve into. Right. It's, well, you're just learning about evolution right here, right? You yeah. haven't seen an evolved form of anything else yet. Right, That's because so they're cool. not in Viridian Forest. So, like, that, yeah, it's so cool, too, that, like, there's still more of that mystique, you know? Mm -hmm. Right, they, they could have just shown Butterfree and uh, Beedrill, but they didn't. I don't cool. think I don't even think I knew that um, Brock was like a main character in the anime yet when I saw mm -hmm. this. He sure looks different right there. Right, for real, so different. Like he's way paler. Uh, he's got a bigger forehead, smaller hair, lighter red, more red reddish hair. hair. Yeah. Uh, he looks more serious and angry. Uh, Brock is kind of a softy. He's a He's firm but soft, like a like a a good stress ball. Hmm. Okay. I like that. He does too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this would have been so cool to see before playing the game. This is what I was talking about. Like that art style, just when I first saw it, like blew my mind. You'll have to trade for one of these Pokemon. There are no Ekans at all in the blue version of the game, and no Sandshrew in the red version. Fun. Yeah. Uh, the Oak Files. That's my first type Ooh, chart. Yeah. That's amazing. I just had to pull one of those up when I was making my team earlier. Because, like, I don't know the type chart anymore. Yes. Uh, at the end of the episode, me and Andrew are going to battle each other. And that is sure to be epic or something more or less synonymous with epic. Let's be honest. Less synonymous with <laughs> epic. But... Where did they get this fan art from? How, did those, how are their fans before this comes out so here right the fuck here was my first taste of having a favorite pokemon <whistles> there it is i didn't realize i was going to be finding that but yep that there it was when i realized like oh my god pikachu has an evolution because i didn't think it did i was just like i know that's like the main the main guy like wow Fucking look at that <laughs> perfectly designed Pokemon right there. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, and then right here was my first taste of having a glimpse at something powerful, badass looking, elusive, creepy, and unexplained and mysterious. Like, uh, not this, not the Poli World. <laughs> hey. But uh, the um, this. It looks like it's. It looks like I'm pointing at you, but I'm because the mouse yeah, there's... is showing up on both screens. <laughs> but uh. I'm still getting used to OBS. Uh, but no, this this uh, Kadabra, we called him Goat Guy. Like, I remember camping <laughs> and me and my brother being like, what's up with Goat Guy? Like, when do we get to play? When do we get to find more out about Goat Guy? Who's he? What does he do? Why he he does kind of look like Baphomet. Like, he kind of looks like this, like, satanic goat-headed oh, yeah. you know, humanoid. Yeah, that's interesting. It's entirely intentional. I mean, look at his cheekbones. Like, mm -hmm. like that is an entirely yeah. It's a pentagram. Choice. Yeah. Yeah, and then his mustache even makes like more pen. Oh no, that makes it less of a pentagram. That makes it a uh, what would you call a seven pointed star? Uh, s uh what is it? Septagram. Uh, septagram. Yeah. And then here we go. Before I'd ever had any glimpse of the anime or anything. My Dang. first Yep. Oh my god, I remember how excited I was to finally like see this stuff. So when I watched my first episode of the anime, I had already seen this. Hail Satan. And we got a Hail Satan in the chat. If you um, go back two pages, yes. That sure. that uh shadowy trainer looks like a later gym leader, but I can't think of his name right now. He looks kind of like Bruno, doesn't he? Bruno, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't he? Yeah. Wonder if that was intentional. Hot. Yeah, and then we've all seen the first episode of the anime, so 
Wait, there's a Pokemon anime? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah, and then we get to the end, and I believe they had a... Uh, I believe after this it told you what channel you could catch the anime. Yep, here we go. Wow, they tell you the whole story, huh? <laughs> yeah, look at that. Where where am I? Uh, oh, that's adorable. I swear, I thought Syracuse, New York was on here. I well, this thought... is the beginning of the alphabet, bud. Oh, there's a second page. Mm-hmm. There we go, because, yeah, I remember dipped at Syracuse, New York. Yep, WSYT. That's awesome. They, I didn't get it in the, the town I lived in, so my grandma would record, like, maybe a month's worth of episodes on a VHS tape and mail it to me. Oh, and my then God! I'd like, <laughs> it was, like, every single episode she recorded on tape and mailed it to me. That <laughs> I was, like, is... in a small town. Dude, your grandma's a fucking baller. I, don't know, I know. I don't know what your this grandma is... looks like. I've never it's... seen a photograph of her, but I'm picturing the grandmother from Don't Be a Menace. Have you ever seen Don't Be a Menace? No. Well, she's a fucking baller, and that's She's I'm the picturing. same one that goes to the sinking ship, or used to go to the sinking ship with me. She's amazing. <laughs> um... The the sinking ship? What sinking ship? The sinking ship. It's this bar that I was... Oh, the sinking yeah. ship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Sorry, which I'm... it is the name, meaning, yeah. It's also, it was kind of sad or whatever uh, that the, like, I don't know. When COVID starts happening, everything's, like, closing down temporarily. And we're all, like, super bummed that the sinking ship is going to be temporarily closed. And then eventually found out that, like, the sinking ship actually sunk. It was... Yeah sad but appropriate that that does suck that, that's so so it's a bummer uh, it yeah. really is like um yeah you'll have to forgive me i just watched frozen 2 a couple days ago so when i hear sinking ship i, I get a different connotation oh head. sure <laughs> there's a pokemon center in every town ahead they charge no money so don't be shy about healing pokemon <coughs> <coughs> Um, hey Gyarados Thug, uh, I think she'd be okay with that. She's very welcoming. Oh, uh, Gyarados Thug, you, oh, I want your grandma to be my grandma. And you got when I a minute ago when I was like, yeah, it wasn't to what Andrew was saying. I didn't want to interrupt Andrew, but that was my fucking medal to uh, naming your Alakazam's Baphomet from now yeah, on. That's rad. Fuck yeah, I'm, I'm mad that you got to that before I did. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. Satan has like 8 million names, but Baphomet's probably the most metal of them. <laughs> it is quite metal. It's qu quite metal. Indubitably. What are you doing, dude? <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. Just standing. You're creeping that dude out. He's like going to ask for a restraining order. <laughs> you're just like standing there looking in his ear. <laughs> I mean, you can stand and just hang out in a Pokemon Center, but back off that guy and get out of his bubble. <laughs> hey you came from pallet town and so see this is sort of um part of the thing that informs my theories about pallet town that it's sort of like an offshoot of viridian city clearly the mail carriers don't even visit pallet town yeah you're right i mean there's only what like eight people or less that live there um it's little Right, and, and so are we all like in the chat in the on the podcast? Are we all in agreement that there are more buildings in the cities than are depicted in the games? That's a loaded question. I mean, you're assuming that we're all going to agree with each other, and it's going to be an easy answer with no nuance. I mean, if I was assuming that, I wouldn't have asked. But you said, "Are we all in agreement?" Yeah, instead of what sure. do you think okay so you're leading right. question it was that? a leading question yes yeah yeah yes you are correct but no the answer is yes red says yes the answer is yes we all must came <laughs> <in agreement. laughs> oh wow i can't believe i just i didn't even mean it i just like unintentionally gave you the coolest fucking nickname to have in a fucking pokemon live stream i just said i'd call this dude red and now i have to stand by that yeah Sentinel Red is a fucking pretty cool name, though. It it's... really is. I'm thinking, yeah, picturing X-Men slash Pokemon Red. Right, well, like, I'm thinking Omega Red, the Sentinels, like, yeah. that's a pretty badass fucking mutant killer right there. Code Red, Mountain Dew. Code Red, yeah, Mountain Dew. Uh, that's my year, too. It's a What's good that? one. 89? Oh, is that the year you were born? Yep. Oh, yeah, my sister, so you guys are the same age. Cool.
Uh, you want to talk about some manga? Or are you, you think, are you um, close to Paltown already? You know, yeah, I think at the point where I'm humming along with the music, that's probably a good call. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we have to, but it has been almost an hour. It's been an hour already. Shut the fuck up. Isn't that crazy? That's insano in the brain -o. Um Yeah, that makes <laughs> me is... think we're definitely going to go for longer than two hours. No obligation to stay with us. Uh, I can't imagine we'd go longer for three. Or longer than three. Um, yeah, let's talk about this manga. So, uh, I'm curious, who's read the manga? Uh, Andrew, have you? Uh, yes, I love the manga, and I got it pretty early on, and I've always loved it. It's fantastic. Happy birthday, Ariana. Ariana or Ariana? I, want I, to make I was sure. just typing that in the chat to uh, get a clarification on the pronunciation. But happy birthday either way. Way to go. You made it. Uh... You deserve it. I guess I could try to refine what character this is going to be. Do you, do you remember the 21st night of September? Um, do I remember the 21st night of September? I yeah. Guess tonight. The song? Yeah, I September, don't know. September, Earth, Wind, and Fire? Is it? Oh, oh, I love that song. That's a fucking good song. Um, mm hmm Uh, it's an original character I made for a comic, but I can't illustrate it. Ariana. Happy birthday, Ariana. Thank you for watching. Uh, Ariana. Cool. So I'm curious, uh, as everybody watching, have any of you guys read the manga? Uh, because we're going to talk about it now, and we're going to go through the narrative, and I think it's kind of cool to give people a background, in case you haven't read it, for how this differs from other adaptations of the source material and the source material itself. Um, and, you know, talk about how we enjoy it. We're just talking about Volume 1, but... Yeah. Uh... So, as uh, Andrew said earlier, one of the things that uh, is very different from the other adaptations of the source material is that Red's first Pokémon is Pori... Er, Porygon. Poliwhirl. <laughs> is Poliwhirl, and I think that's really fucking cool. So when, when the manga starts out, Red is actually already an established Pokemon trainer, uh, and uh, it, they, they, they don't say whether or not Poliwhirl is his only Pokemon, but it starts out with him catching a Nidorino, who he never uses on his team. It seems like throughout this manga, Red just kind of catches Pokemon, but doesn't include them on his team. Right, and I think it's his only Pokemon because... He seems like kind of surprised that he has two Pokemon and can show them like next to each other. Like, I feel like, I don't know if they explicitly said this is my first Pokemon, but I think later on in the story, they have a flashback to when it was a Poliwag uh, and it was his first Pokemon. But in, you know, the first volume, it's like he just has Poliwhirl, uses that to catch Nidorino and then uses that to catch or uses both of them together for the rest of the series or yes, story. Yes. Yeah. Um, Andrew, you can see the chat better than me. I, I, yeah. I'm having trouble with the text. I got to refine it. <laughs> uh, I love I, the first manga I read was on Sylph Radio. You're talking about the Electric Tail of Pikachu manga, right? And then uh, what's Gyarados Thug saying right above that? I never learned how to read. <laughs> You're a pretty good thought. typer for not and being so able to read. I, I, that's what I thought it said, and I initially thought the same person said both of those. So I thought they said, I never learned to read. The first manga I read was on Sylph Radio, and I thought that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> your, your podcast taught me how to read. Uh, and then Red says, canonically, he catches all 150. Yes. Uh, that's spoiler awesome. Alert. Yes. That's fucking <laughs> great. Um, but uh, even in volume one, uh, his so like you can see on the cover... He's got a Pikachu, a Poliwhirl, and a Bulbasaur. And his team doesn't get any bigger than that, but he does catch a bunch more Pokemon throughout this volume. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Poliwhirl was pretty big in the merchandising, like right off the bat. Like, I've mentioned it, I think, on previous episodes of Self Radio that, like, like stuff, like a bounty ball, a watch, I don't know. I, stuff. I really <laughs> wonder if Poliwhirl was being sort of bandied about in the offices as a potential mascot in the early days, maybe even bef before Clefairy or something, because you're right, like, 
Holy World has so much presence in early Pokemon marketing, mm -hmm. and the fact that it's Red's first Pokemon, it like speaks volumes. And and Holy World does just seem so. Is it Ken Sugimori's favorite? Did I, I don't read know. that somewhere? I haven't I heard mean, that. I might just be Mandela affecting myself, and that's not even the correct usage of Mandela effect. But um, I, I think that the well, just because this manga wasn't released until I think '97 in Japan, so a year after the games, whereas the Clefairy manga was before the first game came out. So it seems like maybe Clefairy was a, an idea, and then Pikachu, and then Poliwhirl, which I don't know. They're still deciding a mascot at that point. I don't well, know. Well, that's why I wonder if Poliwhirl was the earliest one. Because, like, merchandise, uh, theoretically, I imagine, takes the longest to produce. I feel like mangas, they, like, are generally written by one guy who just mm -hmm. kind of draws it and sends it in month by month. So, um, those are sort of done right down to the wire, I think. But, like, the merchandise, maybe they had to know, like, so long ahead of time. And maybe this dude was starting the manga a little ahead of time. Like, we know he did. Yeah. I don't know, but I wonder... I wonder, um... Either way, I think it fits. Like, Poliwhirl is just, like, so fitting, especially for early Pokemon. Yeah, I, I feel like most of the early, like, merchandise, there'd be the three starters, Pikachu, and then, like, Eevee, Meowth, and Poliwhirl were, like, the next three, maybe? And Meowth, like, entirely because of Team Rocket in the anime. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's in every episode. That makes him a main character. Meowth is so cute, though. The original Sugimori art. Ugh. I, I love Meow. Great love Pokemon. Meow. Yep. And a great character in the show, too. I wholeheartedly agree. Absolutely. It's weird that there's a talking Pokemon still, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, but... Uh, the kid's it cartoon. Is what it is, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's the kid's cartoon. Meow. That's right. Uh, so... So yeah, he that that said, Poliwhirl is just a Pokemon he's had since he was a kid as a Poliwag, and it, he does get a Pokemon from Professor Oak. Still, they uh, so like the way the manga works is like he sees Mew is actually like one of the first Pokemon yeah. he sees. Page twelve, you see first appearance of Mew, which is crazy. Yeah, and um, he sees Team Rocket trying to... Let me go rest. My mom will refresh me, right? He sees... <laughs> uh, oh, you're talking about the game. Sorry. Yeah. I had, like, the, 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 the live chat, or the uh, live stream is going going by... Uh, it's taking it out of me. I gotta go take a rest at my mom's house. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he sees Team Rocket, and he sees Blue trying to catch Mew. And he's like, what's up with this shit? And he, like, goes to Professor Oak's lab to try to, like, get uh, advice from Professor Oak. Like, what's up with this Mew? Like, what do I do? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it, September. Come on. You got this. Yeah. That literally was a critical hit. Doggone. That was exciting. Right. Uh, that would have been embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty epic. Over on my first live stream, or not a game over, but blacking out. Meowth yeah. used to be way chubbier. Yeah, a lot of Pokemon used to be way chubbier. Uh... Yeah, I don't know what what changed exactly. I mean, I I'd prefer to <coughs> say like a, a more polite way of saying that would be to like Meowth, you're looking really good nowadays. Like you're looking really mm -hmm. good. Or, <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, sure. I don't know. Society's beauty standards got to them when they came to America, maybe. They're like... Well, I don't know. I feel like Japan's pretty harsh on on body images, too. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Me? Yes. Thanks, Ma. Uh, but, yeah, the, it's interesting seeing that Red is already, like, established in Pallet Town in the manga, like, first panel. It's like, he's the Pokemon expert to these kids. And, like... I like there's some piece of writing advice of like always start as late into the story as you can like don't start at square one where they're first learning everything but start where they're already doing something cool um, and then you can do flashbacks if you need to but they do that really well in the manga it okay. just like starts off moving 
it is really interesting like that's the the first major way it deviates from the source material is that it is um does it is it them that gives me a potion i don't remember anybody giving me a potion i think somebody does between here and yeah yeah, yeah that person yeah thanks homie. i remember that guy uh but yeah he uh like he goes so he goes to professor oak's lab and he can't find anyone there. He lets himself in and he accidentally like knocks over a shelf full of Pokeballs and releases all of Oak's Pokemon. Uh, so Professor Oak flips out and they, he helps him, they go track down all of his Pokemon and Professor Oak lets him keep Bulbasaur because Bulbasaur like kind of like takes a liking to him and, and he sort of demonstrates his compassion towards Pokemon. In a weird way too, like the way that I mean, Red is making some big assumptions, but Red is like, I know you're scared, Bulbasaur. You've probably never, like, been outside or seen another living being before. It's like, what? Like, what kind of abuse has Professor Oak been doing this whole lifetime for this Pokemon? <laughs> and Professor Oak just says, like, either nothing or, like, dot, dot, dot. It's like, wow, he has a reaction shot and everything. So it's like, man, I thought he was supposed to be an expert on Pokemon, not just, like, putting him in a cage, but you would assume interacting with them and like allowing them out of their pokeball once in a while but it seemed like red was throwing some shade and maybe that was a translation thing or i don't know i don't know it's kind of weird though arthur more I, I i think there's more than one translation i didn't so like hmm. we didn't research this like uh we would have done for uh self radio pokemon podcast proper <laughs> if there's anyone new that's watching that hasn't checked out self radio check out self radio it's like a uh like, we, like, super research all the topics we cover. I'm not trying to denigrate the show you're currently watching. Please, we I hope you're super research. <laughs> but, like, it's an entirely different experience is what I'm trying to uh, imply, that, like, you're not getting the full Silf Radio experience if you're just watching the live show. But um, I noticed a few things that I was curious about. For one, this is the Viz Kids uh, translation that I have, and I'm not sure if that was... Um, I can go, they're right up there. I have some older copies of the individual issues that were published here way back in the day. But um, there's also a point where they actually refer to the uh, bike shop as Miracle Cycle, which was that, I feel like that didn't come around until Gen 3, right? I don't know. I, I don't remember that being, I don't know. I'm looking it up right now to see if there's like, information about different translations but i haven't found anything yet okay but uh i think that's really interesting how like so now he's got two pokemon he's got poliwhirl his og original and uh bulbasaur his pokemon that was given to him by professor oak and those two along with another pokemon that he'll be catching well, shortly in this book didn't he catch nidorino too right like, but nidorino first page he did, but then Nidorino is never on his team. Oh, so maybe he gave it to one of those kids or something as their starter Pokemon. Well, I don't know, because there's even a point in the manga where he is, uh, he's got all these Pokeballs. He's got so many because he's caught so many Pokemon that they're literally falling off his belt. Um, and then Bill ends up giving him uh, he doesn't even give him pc storage he says that he can use his teleporter so that he can send him whatever pokemon uh he needs and that way he doesn't have to carry all of them on him so they actually present mm. the six pokemon limit as more of a matter of practicality in just yeah, carrying yeah. more than six pokeballs that's cool yeah right it's weird I, that's something i always love about the manga in the comics the, the electric tail pikachu just seeing like a slightly different interpretation of this weird and wonderful world that we love so much like just seeing a slightly different change is like oh man wow think of the implications of whatever if you could buy pokemon at all the pokemarts and stuff like that how different would it be it's pretty cool yeah and uh yeah so i i don't know it is really weird because there's moments like maybe he's just catching pokemon to catalog for the pokedex because there's moments where like he could certainly stand to have more than two fucking Pokemon with him, and he d doesn't. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's weird. He just never, he doesn't pull out the other Pokemon. He doesn't, I don't know. He's definitely much more of a 
good trainer than Ash, but there's also, he makes some like weird choices too, like uh, fighting against Brock, for example. Like, I know we'll probably talk about that once you get to that point in the game, but like, he's using electric attacks the whole time and it does work. And then like the very next issue, he's talking about how like a water attack will never hurt a Bulbasaur. It's like, didn't you just use an electric attack to defeat a rock Pokemon? So yeah. I don't know. And it's kind of weird. Like he's an expert, but he makes bad decisions still. So it's kind of weird. Misty fucking bodies his Bulbasaur with water attacks. So like, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Weird stuff. Inconsistent. Oh, another thing I thought was funny about the beginning of the uh, the manga is, so Ash is talking to Professor Oak, and Oak gives him the Pokedex, and Ash is like, okay, cool, I'm going to go on my Pokemon journey now. We never see his, you know, guardians, his mom. We don't see anybody else. He doesn't tell anyone he's going on a journey. There's nothing about getting a license or being age 10 or any of the stuff that's set up in the, you know, other canon. He just goes. He's just like, okay, yeah. bye, old man. It's kind and of it interesting. Kinda, it works, and it is interesting, yeah, that, like, the whole, you know, what would have been an interesting conceit that they could have went with is if Pokem, if um, Professor Oak's Pokemon escaping was the catalyst that sent him on his adventure, and gotta catch them all referred to him having to catch all of Professor Oak's Pokemon. I like and, that. Right? Or like maybe just replace the Pokemon in his collection, like with other members of the same species. I know that. that is that's such a cool call to action of like well obviously gotta catch them all is a cool thing and like discovering new pokemon and exploring the world those are all exciting like gameplay hooks but also i made a mistake and i have to go clean it up and that involves exploring the world of pokemon like i'm there like i want to do that so <laughs> that's like awesome. in in further refining our ideas for the perfect live action movie adaptation of Pokemon it's such a hard thing to do because it's not a traditional narrative that's fit for like the structure of a film even a very long one or even a trilogy of films um, trilogy would definitely be easier to do than just one but it would still be very difficult uh, Gyarados says slow tech speed please I'm still learning to read <laughs> <laughs> that's good uh, I love it you guys are going to make this show so much better than it would have been without you um, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and so, like, a good way, like, something I love about the Ninja Turtles movie, which I talked about in uh, the most recent episode of Fair Enough Podcast, uh, was that um, they take elements from the cartoon series and from the original source material of the comic. And they sort of put them together to create the definitive Ninja Turtles. And I think you could do something like that by taking um, things from the anime, the manga, and the video game. And like one thing that you could take from the video game, I mean from the manga, would be Professor Oak's Pokemon escaping and him having to go catch them. And uh, I was struggling with the concept of in this movie franchise, who do we give them as their first Pokemon? Um, and I eventually came to the idea that you'd give them all three. And that could be a great way to introduce from the video game, Professor Oak actually says, uh, these are my last three Pokemon. So he could be like, these are the last three I have left after you just fucking let all my other Pokemon escape. Take them with you. They'll help you go gather the rest of them. That's cool. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's a cool, like, uh, making that a more traditional, or, I don't know, maybe more of established, like, a uh, call to action, role-playing game type of thing. Uh, yes, SFS Blake, Bakers, Blakers, Blazers. Blakers. Blakers. How's it going, homie? And then I just posted a link uh, to a book there for you, Gyarados. That's, it's a, an early reader's book that follows through the Alola uh, series might be good for you getting your getting some practice in with reading English <laughs> shots fired pew, pew, pew. well I'm trying to be helpful honestly <laughs> you're gonna go challenge uh, the elite four I would I would feel so bad right now if it turns out that he literally is actually still learning to read um, <laughs> 
And I just like laughed like riotously at how <laughs> funny that was as a joke. Uh, if it is, there's no fucking shame in still learning to read at all. And like, I sincerely, genuinely mean that. Uh, but I suspect you were joking. It, it was delivered like a joke, which could just mean that they're not familiar with the way the English language works. Uh, but I'm laughing at that, so that's bad. Uh, cool. Oh, I could have maybe leveled up a little bit more before I fucking did this, but... Fuck you, get body, motherfucker. Hmm. Hmm. Shit. I think I made a mistake. <laughs> Use tail whip. Oh, good idea. <laughs> Do a barrel roll. <laughs> there you go. Um, did we go through the whole of uh, Pokemon Power One? Uh, we did. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes. That's still that's so cool. Uh, I was always a fan of the like strategy guides, but getting them like in doses would have been so cool. Man. Alright, you ain't getting anywhere. You ain't winning this battle. Charles. Fucking Charles. Um. Alright. Um. Oh, nice. Good move. I like that. It's a good move. Tackle. Oh, sure real, real high IQ. Tackle? Nice strategy, bro. Oh, another tackle? Wow. Fucking... Fucking Charles. See, this is why I don't respect Charles as a trainer. Like, who just keeps using tackle? Sparks uh, are flying in this heated match. <laughs> tackle. Tackle. Somebody do a tail whip. Come on. Or growl. I think Bulbasaur is growl. <gasps> Boy. <laughs> yeah, fuck Charles. Can I get a fuck Charles in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's really cool. That's fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, Blakers. That uh, Pokemon was what helped you uh, or motivated you rather to learn to read, and I, I imagine helped you as well as motivated you. Um, I love that. Yeah, that's a really cool thing. Like, I, I do think RPGs did that for a lot of people, where they're like, reading books at school is one thing, but like trying to play a game for fun, you actually had to put some brain power into that sometimes. Uh, also, I got to go to uh, Germany last year, and I had just decided I was going to start reading the Gold and Silver arc of the manga, and I was like, I'm going to buy the the first volume of that in German because I was like kind of learning German. And uh, it was a cool way of learning another language, too. It, the hardest thing was trying to figure out what was a, a Pokemon name and what was just a German word I didn't know yet. Because um, it's all in all caps. So I couldn't tell, like, if it was a proper noun, I'd be like, okay, that's some Pokemon I can figure out with context clues um, versus this is some German word I don't know. I need to learn, look up what this word means. But it, it was a cool experience for sure. Uh, I can imagine. Um old is watching with me saying pika pika oh god there's a two-year-old <laughs> watching um too cute i warn you <laughs> i can try to watch my language but that will not be something that <laughs> happens with regularity on this show nor can i nor can i guarantee like i'll look right in the chat right now i mean your two-year-old probably can't read but that was the same person that but hi <laughs> pika, pika, pika. hold on i think i can do a decent pikachu hold on your, your two-year-old will probably appreciate that right Pikachu, like uh, I guess it's not that great, but Pikachu. That's when he's electrocuting people. Oh, language. is that what that was? <laughs> I caught myself a minky, a minky, a minky. It's extremely quick to anger. It could be docile one moment, then thrashing away the next instant, like. I feel personally attacked, Pokedex. <laughs> <laughs>
Give a nickname to the captured Mankey. I got a female Mankey. What are we gonna name it, guys? Uh. Hmm. Miss Piggy. Um. Miss Piggy. It does have. Oh, it has a Miss Piggy nose. You're right. It does. And quick to uh, be reactive or angry or whatever. That's a bad name, though. Someone else will have something better. Well, sure, but Miss Piggy. Um, we can go somewhere with there. This is how I name Pokemon sometimes. So like, All right. we can like do a little like degrees of separation to get the name. Like Miss Piggy. What other names are associated with Miss Piggy? I think uh, Frank Oz, who did the voice. So there's Frank. Mm -hmm. There's Oz. Um, what other famous pigs are there's There's Babe. Uh, Spider Frank Pig. Spider Pig. And Spider Ham. My names are always two on the nose. <laughs> uh, what, what did he say? Shaky? Shaky Pig is nose. a good name. I like Shaky. Shaky. Yoga. Um, shaky Yoga. Well, like, what, what if we... Okay, so what if we combine those two ideas? Shaky and Yoga. So if we... Uh, <laughs> what would you call a form of Shaky Yoga? <laughs> what pose would that be? Yeah, there's like Upright Dog... Downward. Tree pose is pretty shaky. Well, like, yeah, but we can make up our own. What's a oh, shaky? Oh, sure. A shaky a one? Shaky yoga pose. You just gotta shake it off. Hmm, hmm. I got it. Let's hear it. <laughs> I think we lost your audio. <laughs> we lost my audio? Oh, you're back now. Oh, no, I, just I just saw just... you, like, shaking it a lot, and then oh, I couldn't just... hear what you're saying. I was just happy with myself. <laughs> Shake it off. Tay Tay. Or should oh, it yeah. be T Swizz? Tay Tay's pretty cute. Right, Tay Tay. Yeah, Tay Tay's a good name for a monkey, too. Yeah. Oh! Sh like, Shiki? Like, uh, well, I got there from Shake It Off, Taylor Swift. Hmm. Well done. <laughs> Michael J. Fox, wow. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Oh man. Uh, <laughs> uh, good one, Lakers. Uh, I don't remember there being Mankeys over here, but I guess obviously there are. <laughs> Mankeys and Nidorans, yeah. I, I remember like Nidorans for sure. Maybe it's a version exclusive thing. I don't know. I don't know. think so, but maybe, no. yeah, I don't know. Oh, you know what else was weird in the manga? Was that there was uh, a Kangaskhan in like. I don't think it, I don't know if it was explicitly Viridian Forest, but like the West Woods he, or whatever they called it. Yeah, after he gets his Bulbasaur, he uh, heads out and he runs into Blue again, and Blue is like trying to catch Pokemon with his Charmander, or is it a Charmeleon already? No, it's it's Charm uh, Charmander. It's still Charmander, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it does evolve to Charmeleon in Volume One, but um. He uh he there's a wild Kangaskhan that he start that Blue starts trying to uh capture tries to attack and capture and um Red is like dude chill and Blue's like fuck you bro uh, but Red can can tell that it's just trying to protect its baby that's got baby in its pouch so uh he shows it some compassion Blue is like wow I've never seen someone be nice before. <laughs> Fucking soy boy. Uh, that's me. That's us. I, I thought that their rivalry was much more like healthy and good natured in the manga. Like the first time that Blue like beats Red at something or like has a moment to say like a cool one liner, he says something like uh, if all you care about is winning, you'll hurt yourself or something like that. Like, he said something, like, relatively wise and helpful. I was like, dang, right off the bat, being, like, more friendly about it than just, like, just trying to destroy each other. What I get from Volume 1, now, I, I have read more than Volume 1, but I haven't read the entire manga. There's a lot of it. Uh, mm -hmm. but, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna act as if I've only read volume one, like, as we move forward through Silf Radio Live and review the other volumes. Um, this is something we'll be coming back to, I imagine, to finish the rest of it. Uh, but, um, at least the rest of Gen 1, while we're playing Leaf Green. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? What was I talking about? Um, Ashen, or oh, Red and Blue's relationship. Yes. 
like, with Ash and Gary, they're sort of like character flaws. Like, Gary is an arrogant little prick. And Ash, Ash just needs to learn. His character flaw is just that he's the archetypal fool. Now, I don't mean a fool as in, like, a Chester-type fool, but, like, um, Frodo Baggins is filling the archetypal role of the fool. The fool just meaning the person who needs to learn about this world and this story. Um, in the manga, uh, I feel like Red and Blue's opportunities... Um, opportunities, meaning character flaws, are, um, I feel like blue is cold and red is arrogant. Is that... Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I, cause I think most people would probably guess that blue is arrogant. Even people that have read it might remember blue being arrogant, but when you read it, red is really the more arrogant one, and blue is just more of the kind of, um, unfriendly one. Right. Yeah, I think cold and arrogant is a good description of that. That, like, dichotomy? Is that the yeah, right word? Totally. D dynamic, dichotomy, for sure. And, like, they both kind of need to... I don't know if they need to learn from each other, but they balance each other out, for sure. Um... Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I... So, yeah, so... So, as we move forward in the manga... Um... Oops. Oopsie daisy. Uh, my bad. I'm just checking, fixing something real quick. Okay. So yeah, as we move forward in the manga, he uh, he ends up getting Pikachu at Viridian City. Uh, there's this like mischievous Pikachu running around causing problems in Viridian City, and he does the town a favor and catches it. And those three Pokemon, Poliwhirl. Bulbasaur and Pikachu will be Red's main Pokemon through Volume 1 and beyond. Right? Yeah. yeah. What you drinking? Water. Pretty exciting stuff. The fun thing about being unemployed is, like, coffee at any time of night with no shame. I did bring a, a Fago over here in case I got sleepy, but... This has been very energizing. I'm doing great. Yes. Not normally a soda person, but like finding out that there's 50 different flavors of Fago has captivated my gotta catch them all gene, and uh, I'm starting to collect them now. That's trying to find cool. the weird flavors. I like that. What are some of the weird flavors? Uh, the main my like white whale is called um, Arctic Sun, and it looks like a, a cleaning product from the 90s. But it's, yes. Sorry, I think it's like cherry and citrus flavor, but I haven't actually had it. And it's kind of a white uh, material color. Oh, the coffee drinking game. Is your name Aaron? Is that right? Yes. I yes, think I remember Aaron. that. Yes, it's 100% Aaron. Yes. Because <laughs> remember the, uh, yeah, that was the episode when we were designing a board game or when we were reviewing board games and then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to um, put, uh, I thought it would be fun to, Actually, I forgot I was going to do this, or I would have done it at the start of the episode. I thought it, it would be fun to, on the title cards at the beginning of the episode, uh, remind people the rules of the drinking game. Because uh, <laughs> when we're doing the live shows, that could be fun to make it an actual, like, alcoholic drinking game. Oh, man, that would be great. You know what I'll do is I'll uh, get a bottle of whiskey. And then whenever I can actually do this right now, if we want. And but then... you're the you're the the cause of all of the triggers, you right, know, of when you someone have to drink. You can tell me you're right. I am though. And I've noticed other things like, uh, but I don't remember a lot of them. Only available in big lots. Uh, Fago. I need to try big lots. I've been getting them at gas stations mostly, uh, but I'm running out of what they have in Indianapolis gas stations. And yeah, it's made in Michigan, which is cool. It's kind of a local thing. Like, sure, it feels like, you know, soda is not the most handcrafted feeling thing, but it is local, so that's pretty cool. Do it. Drink whiskey, says Gerardo. Says Keith. <laughs> um, I could. I've got two half drunk bottles of Jameson in my freezer. Uh, I could. I wasn't planning on it tonight. It might be fun to do that to uh to do that for an episode though and like you make me drink along with you if uh 
if any of the things come up. I feel like, and I feel like we can refine the list and add a few little things to there, like, um, with the, uh, political correctness, you know, it's like every time the, every time someone says the word problematic, like, take a drink, <laughs> like, little things like that. That's great. I, I yeah, feel like fun. with me, it's interesting. Like, you could be like, every time Nathan says it's interesting, take a drink. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Alright, what am I doing here? So, uh, where were we in the manga? Okay, uh, he, he just got Pikachu, Pikachu um, which he he just used what, like, uh, Stun Spore or something? He used, like, a seed attack with Bulbasaur, and, like, that was it. That's all he needed. Yeah, it's a little anticlimactic with, like, a lot of the battles and a lot of the way they solve conflicts in the manga, but... Blakers, are you holding the baby right now? I mean, <laughs> that could be dangerous. You, how many children have been dropped because their parent had to dab real quick? Wait, <laughs> hold on. Is somebody... Are we dabbing with babies? SF Blakers says, I have no liquor, but I'll do a dab instead of a shot. <laughs> Okay, I was wondering, like, what kind of dabbing are we doing with babies? Oh. Because both might be dangerous. That's true. <laughs> I trust you. I'm not. I would never uh, <laughs> call into question your. Um, I would never call into question your parenting. All right. If everybody's gonna do a shot or a dab or something, I'll do a shot. Fucking, it'll take me two seconds. I'll be right back. Andrew, keep the uh, chat entertained. All right, I can do that. We got a tight five on Pokemon comedy. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be doing a battle in a little bit, me versus Nathan, and I'm honestly pretty worried about it, because <laughs> I haven't I haven't battled a real human, like I play through the games, but I don't do anything competitive, I don't even play against my friends, even though they're playing Pokemon at the same pace, so uh, yeah, that's probably going to not go so good, but it'll be fun. It's using this uh, team, oh, Pokemon Showdown, which I've never done either, but I've got a pretty sick team, and I'm excited to uh, try it out. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to see your team. Um, I will be battling tonight with my standard um, current lineup, uh, meaning the Pokemon that I discussed in the uh, Mr. Mime episode, if you listen to the Mr. Mime episode. I was... I was drinking this earlier on, and I just wanted to keep it off camera because it's so sick looking. This is what I call swamp water. Um, it's orange juice and uh, some, oh, rum and what's it called? Blue curacao. It's yes. really good. And yes, this is being recorded for YouTube. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. All right. Cheers, my friends. To, um... To Sylph Radio, both the guest hosts that have helped make it popular and the listeners that have helped make it popular and the producers of the Pokemon franchise who have helped make it possible. Cheers, hey. my friends. Cheers. Do you need to be blurred out or censored, Red? No one's supposed oh. to know that it's Ariana's birthday. Yeah, I don't know if I can do much about that. <laughs> it wouldn't be that hard. Okay. Cheers. Salud. Wow. Did you wow, see a shot? Eat. How much did you take? I just fucking gulp. <laughs> took a big ass chug of it. Just fucking gulp. Gulp. Hey, speaking speaking of ass chug. Speaking of ass chugging, <laughs> who wants to take an ass chug with me? Oh, who wants brother. to do some jankum? Um. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So um, where were we? We were talking about the Pikachu, the mischievous Pikachu that's causing trouble around town. Um, I'm curious about that too. I'm curious if that was an idea that was like bandied around the offices too, because it shows up in the Electric Tale of Pikachu, and it shows up in the uh, Pokemon Adventures or Pocket Monster Special. And I feel like I've seen it even somewhere else, too. Well, you could say that it, he's... or they are pretty mischievous in the, the anime as well. Like, 
Oak is already like warning Ash about that Pokemon being like defective or whatever. He uses some problematic language, I think. Uh, but like that one's different, or you have to watch out for that one. Don't worry, Ash. This Pikachu is one of the good ones. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> um, uh, oh man. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no. I, I mean, like, because a lot of that stuff shows up if you look at, um, say, like the uh, comic book adaptation of Jurassic Park from the '90s. It was based on the original script, so there are moments where it differs and it doesn't exactly look like the movie. And as a kid, I never really quite understood why. But then as an adult, like, I, I learned that. And it's the same thing with um, novelizations of movies are often based on the original script and then things change. Absolutely. Excuse me. So yeah, it's kind of cool that there's multiple sources. It's kind of like you mentioned with Ninja Turtles. Like, then you can kind of pick and choose which sources you use for your, for your headcanon or for, like, different adaptations of it. Yes, and like, but like that just makes me wonder, like, um, as they were determining, like, I can just see this whole thing of like, hey guys, Poliwhirl's going to be the main mascot of Pokemon, so as you're planning your merchandising and your uh, narratives for your manga and your anime, you know, keep Poliwhirl in mind. Hey, actually we changed our mind, it's Clefairy. Hey, actually we changed our mind, it's Pikachu. They're, but you know what, if you've already started doing something... We can just have them, like, make it like a little mischievous Pikachu that they catch in town. I, I don't know. Like, I just wonder if there were little, like, if these were ideas that were bigger than just the specific writers of these mangas had it. And if maybe it came from Game Freak in some way or something. I'm sure that there was some direction about, like, which Pokemon are going to be highlighted and kind of what the game is like if the game's not out at that point. Yeah, definitely. There was definitely something said, and there's 150 Pokemon. They weren't just like grabbing random one. Right. Yeah, um, I like that speaking theory. Speaking of, if anyone wants me to, I I'm weird. I don't always. I don't just catch. I'm not like trying to go for all 150. I just kind of catch when I feel like catching. Um, so if anybody wants me to catch a Pokemon, feel free to let me know. I've sort of ignored the Pidgeys and Rattatas because I've I've caught them so often. That's kind of why I went. Uh, west from Viridian City and caught that Mankey. But, uh, let me know what to do. Uh, yeah. As we were. Yes. Yes. So then he, uh, he moves on from there to Pewter City, right? Yeah. And he, yeah, he moves to Pewter City, he beats Brock, you know, not a lot happens there oh shoot i'll be honest it's it's doing that when i like go to look at my like little outline of the manga i made like a a, uh -huh. a short little outline so i would know each major uh plot point yeah um he meets misty um are we doing this any no we're not doing a nuzlocke um at least that wasn't my intention but if the chat thinks i should i'm willing to i oh, oh guys <laughs> Here's the thing. I answered that by saying you'll catch whatever. Um, a Nuzlocke is where whenever a Pokemon faints, you let it go, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whenever po yeah, and you you can only catch the first Pokemon you see in a new route. Oh yeah, no, we ain't doing no Nuzlocke. Um, <laughs> that said. I think it would be fun to do a Nuzlocke run. I have some ideas for what we could do after we finish Leaf Green, which at this rate will be never. Um, <laughs> after we finish Leaf Green, I was thinking we could move on and try some other... Uh, we'll talk about that in the future. But um, I was thinking it would be fun to do a Nuzlocke run. Yes, Viridian Forest, my favorite fucking area of Kanto. Really? All of Kanto? Yeah, and I, I wow. wow, yeah, I think it is, and I don't think I've ever actually like what a weirdo consciously acknowledged that I'm a weirdo. You're right. Why is there a whole radio episode about Viridian Forest? Um, lavender. Man. I don't know. I really like Lavender Town, and I really like Viridian Forest, but I think while Lavender Town may be my favorite, I think I like Viridian Forest more. 
even though that sounds weird and contradictory. <laughs> cool. Your favorite doesn't have to be the one you like the most, technically. It just it just almost always is. It's, yeah, it's that's fair. So like, it's like 99% synonymous. Is it that your your favorite one has like that's the one you put an asterisk next to, but the one you like the most has the highest score on the like rubric kind of thing? Well, that would be the best. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I think. <laughs> I think like 9.9 .9 times out of 10, your favorite is synonymous with the one you like the most. And this is the only time that I can think of a somebody or something being my favorite that isn't necessarily the thing I like the most. That's Maybe fair. I, I can kind of relate to that. Like uh, sometimes, I don't know, you'll really like... Uh, well, I mean, I think that's pretty common with Pokemon, for example, like the actual characters. Because there's so many of them, they might have one that's just like a favorite, but you don't necessarily like them the most. So I'm I'm starting to come around with you on this one. Okay. Although it is still weird, it's a strange concept. <laughs> hey, it that's is. me. It is. Yeah, I um, I don't know. I just love Viridian Forest, maybe because it's like the first spot on the on your journey. So like me nostalgically, I took at one point in time I set out on my first Pokemon journey, and and there was a time when this was the first um, place that I really explored. You yeah, know? I know. Oh, it's like, totally different. Like it's a change of pace for sure. The music changes. It's your it's first dungeon. Wild. Yeah, your first dungeon. Well said. Yeah, and uh. And I love the forest. I mean, if you if you go check out our Instagram yesterday, in preparing for this uh, podcast, I reread uh, Pokemon Adventures Volume One. It's a really easy read. If you guys ever want to read the Pokemon manga, uh, Gen One is just seven volumes, and you can read one volume in a day. It's a really easy read. Uh, and um, and also they get the like uh, reputation for being super dark. I don't think they're that dark. They are appropriate for your kids if your kids aren't, like, aren't fragile Two years old. snowflakes. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, like, yeah, a zombie Arbok gets cut in half, but, like, come on. Um, catch a Pikachu. I'm going to catch a Pikachu. Uh, yeah. I was actually thinking that a moment ago that, like, I am not planning on leaving Viridian without catching a Pikachu. Well, maybe I'll leave, but I'll be coming back if I don't. Like, I might leave to heal if I have to. Uh, Another, like, exciting thing about getting to Viridian Forest was just finding a rare Pokemon like Pikachu. Not only is Pikachu such, like, an iconic early Pokemon, but, like, it's really rare there, but you can find them, which is cool. I feel like their percent rate of showing up is a lot rarer than Nidoran's over by Victor Victory Road, for example. Oh, Tay Tay, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't want to like display a lack of confidence in you as a valuable member of this team. You are a valuable member of this team, and my friend, you will have your time to shine. But I, I got put. I got set September back out. Uh <laughs> it's hard being level two. Yeah. We were okay. all there at one point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, granted, September wasn't. Like, September came to me as a level 3, but... That's right? true. Did you get I your think five. level 3? Level 5? I think 5. Okay. Uh, um, but, tay, tay if it makes you feel better, that means that at some point, you will have leveled more than September, you know, under D's uh, tutelage. Also... Potentially. More Than September was the name of my post-hardcore uh, pre-Screamo album in high school. That's really good. Oh, that's Thank a drink, you. right? That's uh, in, in Aaron's drinking game. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Take a drink. <laughs> I think. Oh, I gotcha. Um, I, I did say it was my album, not a uh, band, but that counts. Album sure, one. sure. Yeah, Gyarados Thug pointed out that in Let's Go, you can find a Bulbasaur in Viridian. That is really cool. What? That's kind of cool and kind of lame. You're a Let's Go hater, though. Let's be real. Wait, am I? Yeah. I am? Yeah, yeah. I'll make a supercut of every time you've ever talked about it. Wait, are you serious? 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think so. I That's my uh, I my opinion. I don't think I am. I never thought I was. <laughs> Hater is a strong cool. word. I, you know, it's Andrew with the sick burns tonight. Wait, um, is it that I'm a let's go hater, or do I just talk a lot of shit? I think that I, I would say that let's go. You gave the least amount of a chance to, out of the mainline series or the console. I don't know how you describe it. The non-mobile games. I'm genuinely. Con I'm not like. I'm not. <laughs> you haven't triggered me. I'm just. Okay, uh, I'm just. Can I? I really am curious. Like I. Because I don't feel like that's the case, but... I feel like... Did, okay, so this is... I mean, it's not like I studied for this and, like, I, I'm ready to defend my thesis or anything, but I feel like I remember you talking about, like, you watched a friend play it, and the only thing you liked was that you could fly on a Pokemon and ride on their back, but other than that, it seemed like, what's the point or something? Here's what I think the problem is. I think, um, so, like, I, 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 I don't know, like... I, I've never, like, received actual confirmation from my parents, but I strongly <laughs> suspect that perhaps, um, perhaps, I don't know, I don't want to make any accusation that I'm adopted or that one of my parents wasn't really one of my parents, but maybe, like, a Vulcan did a mind meld with my parents, like, right before they conceived me or something, because I think I'm half Vulcan. Um, I think what happens is that whenever I give my critical assessment of something, I often, unless I'm like, unless I'm going out of my way to say how much I liked it, I'm off. I often send the implication that I don't like it, mm -hmm. um, because I don't. Uh, I think I do remember what you're saying, and I think like this happens with movies a lot. Oh damn it, Dame Dame again. Dame Dame again. Dame again. Dame again. In the core games, I want to be able to catch the starters in the wild more than anything. Interesting. Are you trying to get knocked out, bro? No, I'm. I was just like, oh shit. Let me go back and cure my uh, Squirtle. Um, I was about to go forward and go to Pewter City, and then I second guessed myself. This is what happens when you have anxiety and you have to make simple decisions. And then I was like, no. Why go to Pewter City yet? You haven't even been there yet. Go back to Viridian. They know you there. Mm -hmm. Familiar faces. <laughs> I also, I, I kind of miss the day-night cycle in the games, like, in video games, I always like going in, like, going home or, like, finding a bed and going to sleep. There's something really rejuvenating about that. Like, I love in Minecraft when it's nighttime and you, like, go inside and you're safe and you go to bed. Like, that's, like, so soothing to me. And yeah. it's always permanently daytime in a lot of games, which is just kind of disorienting especially if i've been playing for like a couple of hours it's like i feel like my guy needs some sleep my character needs to get some shut eye and some rest some yes. safety so uh so yeah no i don't i i think let's go is cool i mean i don't think it's incredible and i definitely have like criticisms i can make of it but like i don't by any means like dislike it or anything okay fine I'm, well, I'm not trying to like. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. No. <laughs> September fainted. But that's guess the, that was the name of my sophomore release. Of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but guess who's gonna get you to safety? Who's Little Tay Tay. Tay Tay. Tay Tay's gonna carry you. Look at this. You got me all the way to the Pokemon Center. How's that for a fucking ego boost? What a big girl. Fuck yeah. Form that's awesome. Bond here. Um, <laughs> so, uh, catching the starters was wild. It was so cool. So, like, I don't know. I feel like you don't feel like it cheapens the starters a little bit. There's a part of me that wants the starters to not, like, there's, obviously, I can't deny there's a part of me that would be incredibly excited to catch a Bulbasaur in Viridian Forest. I would geek the fuck out. I would love every minute of it. But there's also a part of me that, um, that kind of wants the starters to be more special than that. They're they're almost like a legendary when you can only get them from one place and you only get one chance to get them each. It feels right. like a legendary to me. But then again, it's kind of like an endangered species. Like you see this thing and you can only ever see it in captivity. And then in the next generation, it's wild and like lives on its own. Like that'd be really cool. I don't know that there's a one-to-one -one connection between endangered animals and the starter Pokemon, but sure. eh, it's maybe, what it made me think of. Maybe if they just made them hyper-fucking-rare. Like, if they literally made it, like, 
like shiny level rare, you know? That's crazy. That would I, I think I would like that a lot. Um So where were we in the manga? Uh he Just met Misty, I think. He meets Misty, yeah. Um Misty's trying to catch her Gyarados, who's been uh who's acting who's acting uh what do you call it? Like A fool? Acting a fool, yeah, ass out, fucking <laughs> um it's like raging, like it's like uh, turned against her, like it's gone back to like a wild state almost. Like Ash thinks, or sorry, oh my god, I am so sorry everybody. Red uh, assumes it's a wild Gyarados or another person, another trainer's Gyarados because it's like attacking, it's like going hard against her. But uh, it turns out it's her own Gyarados that I think Team Rocket has done some kind of mind control on or something team rocket kidnapped it yeah now that she got it back it's it's not acting like itself anymore so um they team up and they travel through mount moon together where they face off against team rocket koga is there leading the team rocket uh troop although we're not we're not officially introduced to him yet if you're a pokemon fan you recognize him and um and they learn that Team Rocket has this weird science that can force Pokemon to evolve and make them more powerful. They do it in the middle of a battle where they're using a Rhyhorn to fight them and they pull out a actual like syringe and stick a needle into the Rhyhorn, evolving it to a Rhydon. And, uh... And yeah, they, um... You know, they move on, they go to Cerulean City, you know, Red realizes that Misty's the gym leader, and challenges Misty, doesn't defeat Misty, gets the Cascade Badge anyway. Classic. So yeah, I hereby apologize for any time <laughs> that I was one of those motherfuckers that tried to say that Ash just asks for his badges and gets them without winning but red doesn't that's a big that's a big thing on the internet like pokemon like red fanboys being like yeah ash doesn't earn his badges but fucking red red earned every i'm sorry if you're talking about red from the manga that motherfucker did not earn the cascade badge or i mean i think extracurriculars count in your overall score because he did help misty he helped a stranger he like did some good deeds. He, you know, he like Eddie McDowell it a bit to where he like earned some karma, and maybe that counted towards something. Who Love knows? the references. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Was not expecting to think about Eddie McDowell tonight. Uh, <laughs> that just rolled off the tip of my tongue. I forgot about that show. The original. Uh, my name is Earl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's the same plot line. Right. Oh, that's good. I. uh... Yeah, I um, I, I and I'm not complaining. I just think it's interesting to note because that's such a popular argument that like Red earns all his badges and right off the bat, second fucking badge. No, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. talk, talk a lot of shit about her not being able to beat you, Red. You never, you know, Red. You never quite come out and say it's because she's a girl, <laughs> but. I feel like you're doing a little like it doesn't like it doesn't like you're not helping your case any like your subscription to the Jordan Peterson podcast on Spotify isn't helping your case any. All right, anyway, let me stop. Um, um, uh, so do you want to do our battle soonish? How are you feeling? Yeah. Uh, let me. Um. Let's. Let, well, let's. Let's. Let's wrap up the manga here. Cool. Let me, let me get to Pewter City, and we'll battle each other. You're right. Battle? It has been two hours. I, I, yeah, it's flying by. Like having an uh, an audience or you know people in the chat has really made it really fun. It has been really fun. Like I was not expecting this to fly by so fast. It's weird to me to think that we're already pushing two hours, and uh, two hours self radio is one of the longer episodes. But um. Yeah, well, well, throughout the rest of the manga, there's not a whole lot left. He gets to Vermilion City, he encounters the um, Pokemon fan club, 
and ends up like they're all like they have all the lower evolved Pokemon because they don't battle. They just like Pokemon because they're cute. And um, he uh, ends up going onto the sneaking onto the SSN to try to find their missing Pokemon. Has a showdown with Lieutenant Surge. Uh, and this is sort of what I was saying when, like, they don't really resolve their conflicts very satisfactorily. Um, they, uh, they, he, like, Lieutenant Surge knocks him off the ship. And then he remembers about when he was a kid and Poliwag saved him and it had to evolve to Poliwhirl in order to save him. And then immediately the next page, Poliwhirl evolves to Poliwrath to save him. Would have worked better if we just started off the manga seeing that moment as him being a kid and then now we can call back to it and like it would be meaningful and impactful. But I guess that's what happens when you make things up as you go along. That's true, but there is also a lot of manga that is really well thought out and has like sets up groundwork for things that pay off like a year down the road. Oh, so yeah. yeah, I just I do think they kind of were Maybe they just threw that in there at one point. Although, they must have planned that because they didn't give him a polywag in the first, you know, first issue. He already has an evolved Pokemon, so it must have happened at some point. Right. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Like, they kind of did some of the legwork, but then they didn't actually get the benefits of doing that legwork. Right. And then, uh, the, the, the final, like, arc in the manga is when he gets to Lavender Town. And... Uh, basically, their Lavender Tower, the Pokemon Tower, is possessed by this, like, thick purple fog, which is possessing all the, uh, dead bodies of the Pokemon that are buried there. Yes, there are rotting Wait. corpses of Pokemon in this. How do you know it's purple? Um, I think they say so. Oh, do they? I don't remember. Either that, or I just... Got that special I was picturing it as purple, but I didn't remember them actually saying the word. So I was like, wait, what? You saw it as purple too? <laughs> Maybe it's just because so many like ghost Pokemon and poison Pokemon are purple. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought he said something about a purple fog at some point. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I imagined that. I but No, I agree with you. I think it is purple, but it's like, it's a grayscale book. There we go. <laughs> this purple haze is what's controlling those zombies. Thank you. Okay, that makes sense. I left my I left my manga at work today. Sorry, everybody. So, uh, and then he finds Blue there, possessed as well. Helps uh, release Blue from possession. And he's like, now let's get out of here. And Blue is determined to scale the tower because at the top is Koga. And Blue actually, I like that they give the victory to Blue at the end of Volume 1 rather than Red. And Red even... The townsfolk try to thank him, and he's like, hey, don't thank me. It was actually my boy Blue back here. I like that. My boy Blue. Is that an old school reference? My boy Blue. <laughs> See, yeah, they are they are more, f like, friendly rivals. Like, they're, you know, steel sharpening steel. There's some kind of expression like that. They're, like, making each other better and being buddies a little bit. It's a pretty cool relationship, I think. I agree. So, uh... What did you so um? What did you think all all in all? What are your thoughts on volume one of the manga? Like, I, 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 you know, I'm impressed with the pacing of it. Honestly, it goes much faster than the anime. You know, like where I feel like it took them like, I mean, I haven't watched it in forever, especially early on. But like, it takes them much longer to get to Lavender Town, right? Like, this is the first volume. They go through what? Yeah, several gym battles in one volume. Sure, and, and I guess that's... You said that's faster paced than the anime? I think a lot faster, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Because for me, I feel like I would take a slightly slower pace adapting the Pokemon uh, games. But, yeah. But no, I, I see that. Because the anime is very much like an ep just one episode for every major area or whatever, you know? Yeah, I just feel like each issue of the manga, which the manga, I don't know how many issues they get up to within the one volume, but I feel like they don't cover as much as they do in one episode of the show. So I don't know, I was just surprised by how quickly the plot moves along. 
I was right. like, dang, that makes sense, I guess, that the first generation only lasts seven volumes. Um, but yes, yeah, kind of surprised by that. It's also really interesting that like Brock and Misty are good characters, but almost every other gym leader, I mean, spoiler alert, are bad guys. And that makes me wonder too, like how much of that was like decreed by the uh, powers that be, you know? Yeah, it's a good question. It does, it's, the manga's plot gets a lot more interesting than the show, I think. And uh, it feels like maybe the first two volumes are just like, okay, let's just do the stuff that is covered in the game's plot. And then we can go tell our own story until we run out of time and have to start over with gold and silver. Right. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, all in all, like, I, I like it. I don't know if I really have a hot take. I guess my hot take is that A, it's not as dark as everybody gives it credit, or not gives it credit for, or tries, tr seems to insinuate. Um, I think it's like they read that in like a BuzzFeed article, and they're like, yeah, did you know the Pokemon manga was actually really dark? And it's like, yeah, I know you read top 10 dark moments in the <laughs> Pokemon manga on BuzzFeed, but, uh, and, and whatnot. And, um, and, and I get a little annoyed with the manga purists who insist that it is the official canon storyline of the games when it is clearly it's it's the it to me it's the major adaptation it's it's it stands before the anime as the major adaptation to me but it does some weird stuff though like it does go off the rails and like doesn't just follow the rules of the games like i don't know they both the manga and the anime both make up some extra stuff to like add additional plot uh but yeah i, I definitely think it's my favorite interpretation of the pokemon story um uh, yeah yeah it's pretty cool yeah i uh oh and did you see aaron's uh, i did chat? i yeah that's, really That's pretty cool. clever. So uh, Rhyhorn evolves at level 42, but you can get one on Cinnabar Island at a much lower level. Could this be a reference to the syringe forcing evolution on Rhyhorn? Especially since Cinnabar Island is the place where a lot of that scientific research goes on. And in the manga, and possibly in the game, um, Team Rocket is responsible for the research that created Mewtwo. And in the game, so is everyone at Cinnabar Island. Oh, guys, what do you think? Can Tay Tay do it, or, or did I just fuck myself by going into this battle? We'll find out. Yeah, Cinnabar Island is really interesting. Maybe we should do some more research and do a podcast about that area or something. It's almost as if we uh, were already kind of thinking about that. Oh, that <laughs> sounds cool. <laughs> I, uh... I agree. You know, I, I really wanted to try to catch a Pikachu before we closed out, but I think I'm just going to focus on getting out of this battle alive uh, and making it to Pewter City, and then we can uh, beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> I think it'll be a one-way beating. Mm. I think you're putting way too... I think you have w way more confidence than is warranted in my ability as a competitive Pokemon battler. Okay. L I mean, I told Nathan this a little bit earlier, but, like, I literally didn't recognize maybe half of the items that I have access to on uh, whatever this thing's called, Pokemon Showdown. It like It's like, choose your held item. And I'm like, man, I don't know what most of these things are. Luckily, it has the descriptions, but... It's like, man, I thought I knew how to play Pokemon, but it turns out <laughs> I don't know. I only know a little bit because I've never been a competitive battler. battler. Uh, so having to like fully customize a Pokemon within this Pokemon Showdown program was like, wow, this is crazy. I've never done this. I've never done Eevee or Ivy stuff. And like you get to kind of customize all that, which is pretty cool. So I don't know how it'll go. We'll see. Yeah, Pokemon Showdown is awesome. It's super fun in the same way that like... It's fun to make D&D &D characters even without playing a D&D &D campaign. It's fun to sure. just make Pokemon teams. Yeah, you're right. And you can, yeah, you can, like, edit anything. You can edit their, like, gender, their shinies, their, like, EVs, their IVs, their moves, like, all of that. Did they have cool. a second Pokemon or did I win yet? Ooh, I got a low kick. That's cool. You got this, Tay. 
Yeah! Unfortunately, I still gotta use a, uh, either gotta use a potion or an antidote because potions are cheaper, right? I don't know. You know what? I'm just gonna use the antidote. You gotta name the Pikachu Jean Luc Pikachu when you catch him. Jean Luc Pikachu, yes. Oh. From, uh, from um, that's the name of Ash's Pikachu in the Electric Tale of Pikachu manga. Right, right. I was like, I know that from somewhere, but then I was like, is that a Picard reference? It is, yes. Huh. But that's, it's a, it's an official that's Pokemon a stretch. reference too. <laughs> You know what I was reminiscing about today, or like trying to remember where I first got a Pokemon comic? I think I started with the Electric Tail Pikachu before I got this manga. Um, but I think I got it in a like hardware store, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or something. Yeah. Like I have a memory of that. Either that or I just got it at like a bookstore at the mall and then we went to the hardware store and I'm walking around reading it. But I remember like having my mind blown by my first Pokemon comic in a hardware store. And I'm pretty sure it was for sale, just like, either like it was just clipped on like an end cap, or I had just bought it like right before then. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, uh, Blakers, and I was listening to you, but Blakers uh, talking about how many D&D &D characters they've made that they've never used. Yeah, same. Yeah. 100% yep. same. Uh, how many, uh, let alone how many Pokemon I've caught that I've never used. Uh, all right, so here we are at the beautiful Pewter City. I'm gonna you go made ahead it. and uh, come down here to the entrance. Save my game. Yes, I would like to save. Do you have a uh, tradition of where you stand when you save? No, I don't. Because Do this you? seems like an odd place for me, like facing the town. Is that so you remember where you left off, kind of? Uh, no, it's just sort of, you know, we're about to be, uh, this is where we're going to start next, next episode, I guess, is we're going to be entering Pewter City. Like, I just went into the Pokemon Center to heal and then went back to the entrance of the city so that we can have a yeah. clean starting point, you know? No, it's cool. And when you boot up the game, you'll be like, oh yeah, we're entering, like, yeah, it's a cool way to end the episode. But like, for some reason, I always step out of a Pokemon Center and save right there, blocking the doorway, which is totally inconsiderate. But that's like where I always save, which is weird. You know what was one of the things that I uh, loved about Pokemon that was actually a big selling point to some of my friends? Like one of the ways I sold the game to them. Like by sold, I don't mean literally sold, but like pitched it to them. Um, was that you could save the game anywhere. <laughs> Like, literally, like, and they don't start you at the beginning of the area. They don't, no, no, no. You start at the exact spot you are standing. You, with the exact, like, health, like, everything that you had. Like, you can save it at any moment you'd like, obviously, other than, like, mid-battle. Um, and that was, like, a huge thing, especially for an RPG. Like, having to find a save point could be such a pain in the ass. And they were like, wait, yeah. literally? And I'm like, yup, if you're standing... On the left side of the path, you will start the game on the left side of the path. And they're like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Impossible. Inconceivable. How far we've come since then. Yeah, you're right. That's great. All right. So, um, that, that was a voice crack. I, I could have edited it out were this not live. <laughs> Let's have a Pokemon battle, shall we, my friend? Sure. All right, let's do this. I think, I mean, I'm kind of a noob on this website, but I guess I have an account. Oh, I sound like a grandparent or something, but like I, it was weird to me because it remembered my team from the other day, uh, but it didn't remember my username. I had to like re-enter my username. Okay, cool. I was just making sure I would still show up if you searched for me. I think, uh, yeah, I gotcha. I think, um, my team's validated and everything. I should be available. I just don't quite know what I'm doing. Oh, hey, here's a tab that... Oh, this is our game from the other day is still up. Oh, Interesting. really? Because we exited yeah. out. Wow, this is a cool... If you guys haven't played Pokemon Showdown and you kind of like Pokemon Battles, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, check it out. You can. You don't even have to download it, but it's a relatively small download. But um, you can do it on... Uh... Oh, wow. They... Wait. Hold on. What? Hold on. What? I guess it shows our full teams, huh? <laughs> I 
I minimized uh, Twitch, by the way, so I can't see your team. Except for, I can't. <laughs> Okay, choose oh, a lead. Oh yeah, I guess we get to see our whole team before we choose a lead. All right, interesting. Um, let me see who you got. Oh my god, your team looks so intimidating compared to mine. <laughs> You've got some cuties over there, it's true. <laughs> your team looks like they would wreck mine. Well, bro, I'm expecting you to just wipe the floor with me, so I'm like, I gotta at least look tough. Like, <laughs> if I can't actually be good, I want to look good. To my mom, 20 years. What'd you just say? I'm trying to look at this. Oh, one. I don't have the Twitch open anymore, so I'm just like, are you okay? <laughs> Sounds like you're speaking in tongues or something. Me to my mom 20 years ago. I gotta find a place to save. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Blast Burn Radio Nostalgia. And it's funny because now it's all like, uh, shout outs to Blast Burn. Yeah, Blast Burn Radio. We love you. We miss you. Uh, Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. All right. Whoa, cool, cool avatar. I didn't notice that you could customize the your human. Yeah, boy. All right. Who am I going with my lead? Uh, let's look at your team here. You already picked your lead, huh? And I'm slowing I did. down. It's quite all right. Oh, I love Slowbro. Oh, you customize the names, man. Now I feel like a real chum. Yeah, as you should. As you <sighs> should. <laughs> I gotta pull out my type chart here. <clears throat> Let me get my documents and do oh, some I'm research. Still holding my controller. By the way, in case anybody's curious, I am playing with the OG Super Nintendo controller. Not the Pokemon Battle, but the um, the game. All right. I like this. Alolan Sandslash versus uh, Slowbro. That's a cool team up right here. Yeah. Um. Uh, and... Right. And you're right. I, uh... Oh, what a nice text message. I uh, am also pulling up my type chart. So, yes. Uh, I, here's the thing is like I am very secure in my identity as a Pokemon trainer because I identify as a person who exists in the world of Pokemon and um, you don't need to be fucking Michael Jordan to enjoy playing a game of basketball uh, I have a team of Pokemon who they help me travel the land they help me uh, stay alive while I'm traveling and, and enjoying my freedom and, and the outdoors uh, and we have a connection and a brotherhood, and um, that's enough for me. Cute. Uh, and if uh, an amateur basketball player pulls out his little chart that shows him where to throw the basketball and how to dribble it, that's legal, right? What's that? Uh, it just like the metaphor with basketball is a little different because oh, Pokemon funny. is such a complex thing with all the type charts and everything. But like, yeah, I mean, I don't need to be a master fucking trainer to have a nice fun Pokemon battle with a friend. Just like you don't need to be good at basketball to play a game of fucking basketball with your friend. Uh, yeah. That said, maybe I should choose a move. Finally, gosh. Oh. Your guy's name is Yo Yo Do. Yo Do. Yo -do. Yeah. <laughs> is that it? Oh, that's adorable. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Oh, man. So, yes, I'm battling with my, um, with my main character's current team. Uh, I just sort of threw together their team, and I, I both tried to make them as strategic as possible, while also, A, not trying to, like, research strategy to be better than I am, uh, and B, trying to be true to their nature as characters. I didn't, for example, want to give one of them a certain... Oh, is this on me? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sitting Holy. here waiting for you to take a move. <laughs> 
Um, I didn't want to give them a um, a uh, nature that didn't fit their character, for example. Right, that makes sense. I uh, started basically with my like canon team of my character, but then I realized like several of them were not very good. Like I feel like if I was actually in the Pokemon universe, I wouldn't necessarily use like my team I grew up with. I would switch to a more I don't know battle ready team. So I kind of did that. I just like scrolled through some other Pokemon that I would want to have, but weren't like the ones I role play with or whatever. Um, right. What I was thinking might be fun because my character, um, his team has changed throughout the years and almost every time a Pokemon has been taken off his team, it's not that he puts that Pokemon on the PC or anything, it's that that Pokemon has actually completed an arc because they are sort of characters. Um, cool. And uh, yeah, and then they move on and do their own thing. But that, that, that said, um, there are a bunch of past Pokemon that I could choose from, and I think it'd be kind of cool if I maybe put together new teams choosing from past Pokemon that were all Pokemon my character had at one point. Yeah, um, that'd be pretty cool. Right? Uh, I think it would be. And, uh... Because you, you go through so many Pokemon over your, like, entire journey, you, you know... Use and, some for a while, switch out other ones. Right, and I don't mean Pokemon I've caught in the game. I mean Pokemon that my particular character over the years in my head cannon has caught. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing, uh, I've got some new cool ideas going on in my head for the next chapter in my character's life, which I'm pretty into. Cool. I believe we're waiting on you, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just making sure we're not waiting on me. Oh, dang. That was impressive. Oof, you survived that. Barely. Hmm. Um, alright, what do I want to do now? I think I want to go ahead and, uh... Ooh, good choice. <laughs> yeah, well done. I can't believe I, I had no idea you were about to use Aqua Tail, and I just sent mm -hmm. out a, a grass Pokemon. Yeah, that worked out. Your yes, grass poison, uh, huh? It's my brother, yes. Your grass uh, poison, and I want to defeat you. Um, well, I'll tell you right now, he's the weakest member on my team. Cool. Uh, I think, unless Farfetch'd is weaker, but Maz is unevolved, so... You can see that I wasn't going for competitive edge here if I have a Pokemon that is not at its full potential. Oh my god, it's 9.30, I'm still drinking coffee. Yadon! Okay, yes. Um, Zespom, you are, uh, you're both on the, on the, uh, same, um, on the right path as far as my, uh, Slowbro's name. Um, his name, Yodu, comes from Yadon, Yoda, and Yo, dude. So yes, it's all three of those things. He's uh, he's sort of like a ooh, anger. He's sort of like a chill, um, kinda, kind of accidentally wise, um, character, and uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what am I doing here? You think the background uh, artwork is from an actual Pokemon game? It doesn't look familiar. Um, it, no, I think it is. Isn't it from um, Sword and Shield? No. It could be. I think it is. And they just put like some kind of filter over it, so it's more of like a. It's kind of. This is well done. I'm impressed with this Pokemon showdown. Oh yeah, it didn't used to be 3D like this either. That's new. Mm -hmm. Um. How's uh, the levels, by the way, if there's anyone in chat uh, listening and wants to let me know? 
Um, the audio levels? Yeah, the audio levels. Let me know. Um, and uh, and never feel weird about letting me know. Um, like I said, I'm new to this, so it'll always, always help. It'll never be perceived as uh, obnoxious. Um, all right, I think I'm going to go ahead and, yeah. Wow, super effective. <laughs> Oh, you want to fight dirty? You want to fight dirty? All right, let's yeah, fight dirty. Yeah, we can. That's what you're into. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. Hmm? I don't know why I'm not more into Pokemon battling, like... My initial, like, explanation for that is that it's too simple, but then... Thinking about all the types and all the combinations and held items and... Natures, like, it's not simple. Maybe it's too complex, or like... I don't like taking turns or something? I don't know. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I mean... That was cool. <laughs> this is great, man. This is a lot of fun. This is, yeah. We're like, now we're not being as talkative because we're all like, <laughs> strategy, strategy, strategy. Yeah, we gotta plan ahead for the next <laughs> yeah, right. turn. Uh, Alamo, I'm at work and can't watch anyway. What are we looking at here? Oops. Audio is great. I've never done Twitch, but I had the video turned off because lots of buffering. Alamo, I'm at work and can't watch anyways. Oh, also, I'm at work. Okay. Remember the Alamo. Um, interesting. <laughs> I guess I'm going to look back at it. The buffering. I wonder if that's something that... Do you think that's something that's in our video or in your particular connection? I, I don't know how these things work. Um, okay. Altaria. Yeah, I kind of, uh, Altaria has some of the kind of, like, Dragonair vibes that I always loved in Gen 1. Oh, Altaria's fucking gorgeous. Yeah. It feels like a, a mix of, like, Dragonair and Articuno or something. Although, not Ice-type, obviously. Hey, I knocked one of your Pokemon out. <laughs> Yo, dude, you've done well. I don't know if you saw either, but Ori actually came to join us. Oh, I can't see Twitch if you're... Oh, you oh, probably have you an Umbreon. Oh, you can't see me. Okay, yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to get an unfair advantage and know what your attacks are. Because oh, well, then I would just nice destroy you. <laughs> I have it centered so that you can't exactly see them, but you kind of can. Oh, I need to pick a Pokemon. Um... I have seen your Umbreon plush, though, if that's what you're referencing. He's a good boy. <laughs> Were there a ton of uh, options for customizing your human? 
I mean, I know they're just oh, pre-built yeah. sprites. There's a pretty good, yeah, it's all just the, the pre-existing sprites, but there's a pretty good uh, list of options there in, in there. Cool. Yeah, I like that I was able to do the female Team Rocket grunt. That's yeah. really dope. It was cool. I just, I love being able to customize the human. Like, I don't know. I wish you could change trainer classes. I'm, I'm stoked for whenever that eventually happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be really, that'll be interesting. Or even if they just, how cool would it be if they released an, uh, like, official Pokemon RPG book, like, tabletop RPG? I'm down. What's Mina? What's the story behind Mina? Oh, you want to know? That was the name of Thomas Edison's wife. Huh. Uh, and so is this, like, your character's wife or something? No, no, no. She's it's... female. That's no. just uh, the name I I used for my Raichu, just because it's an electric type Pokemon. That oh, makes that makes sense. That's cute. yeah, yeah. What's your uh, top five uh, Pokemon waifus? Wait, waifu is like a crush, right? <laughs> yeah, but it has to be a Pokemon. Oh. Does this imply, we, we like, conversation. is this, like, an erotic thing? Uh, no, no. Perfectly, uh, I don't know what it is. I, I was trying to be weird, and then, like, I actually, I don't know. Art Whatever. Got... <laughs> Gardevoir. Incineroar. <laughs> uh, Salazzle. <laughs> this makes sense. Uh, Gothitel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What a world. Just evolved from you saying that you named your Raichu, which you've always liked Raichu. You Garchomp know. is what? Ground Dragon? I'm not telling you. You have to you're mouse not, over me. You can't tell me. Oh, it'll tell me if I... Yeah. Yeah, it is Ground Dragon. <laughs> I was like, you're really not going to tell me just some basic information I forgot? No, I was just I was just kidding. Just being a jerk. Yeah, you but I would, I would tell you. Jerk. Well, how do you like that? But you didn't see that coming. Oh, I or, meet one of your Pokemon. It's okay, you did well, Mina. GG. Come on, Maz, you got this. <sighs> Maz, you say? Yeah, Maz is named after Morrissey because he's so gloomy. Cool. Morrissey is the lead singer of the Smiths. His fans call him Maz. His fans refer to him affectionately as... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, good reference. Oh, sorry, I missed that. The, at least, uh, at least Oak. they did until he became a fucking, fucking raging fascist. Yeah, he's gone some places. For real. What the he used fuck, to be the man? cool kind of edgy. I'm already nice. struggling with whether or not it's okay to wear my Michael Jackson t-shirts anymore. Now I can't even wear my fucking Morrissey t-shirts. Ya, ya dick. It's the big big t-shirt industry trying to make us buy new t-shirts all the time. It's all a conspiracy, man. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't think I have any attacks that can really hurt you bad. I'll do this, whatever. Oof. Hey, that did something. Hey, we both did gigas. That's fun. Giga, giga, giga. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Maz, you're doing good, bro. And I say bro because... Um, Maz is... Male? My character's brother in in story. <laughs> uh, they were both uh, orphans. Oh, you're serious? No, no yeah, yeah. They're, he's like not biologically, but um, they were both orphans that were adopted by Mr. Fuji, and they consider each other brothers. And so, like, they grew up like sort of causing mischief around the orphanage and stuff. So, Maz and Mina are like in-laws. Um. Oh yeah, you're well. Well, no, my character's not married. He doesn't fuck his Raichu, dude. I don't know. It is. It's pretty wet. It's a surfing Raichu. Jeez. I mean, there's a blanket with you know a younger version of it right behind you. You probably sleep with that thing. Oh, my goodness, my mouse is being a 
jerk. Ugh. My team's so dead, it's only a ghost. Well, and I think it's only fitting. Oh, cool. Purple, purple haze. Yeah. Meow, 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 meow. Unfortunately, well, let's see, I don't want to speak too soon. What, you're going to beat me or something? Well, no, no, no. I just didn't, I was about to say, uh, it doesn't matter. I, I just said I don't want to speak too soon, so I'm not going to no, speak too soon. No, go ahead. You didn't speak too soon. That's I can cool. speak too soon. I was going <laughs> to say it's a shame that uh, Farfetch didn't have a chance to come out this match, but, uh... You can switch. I'll let you do that. Well, yeah, I know. I mean, you're, you're, it's not <laughs> like you can stop me. Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, you're waiting on me, man. Oh, you're fine. Oh, jeepers, creepers. Ooh. Good game, good man. Good game. I think you won, I would say. I won. But good game, we'll do the Corona shake. Elbows. Wait, what's that mean? Is that a elbows. dance move or like a handshake? <laughs> it's like, because you can't shake hands, so you, you bump elbows. Oh, yeah. No, I've done that. Oh, I'm anyway. like, why aren't you bumping my elbow? It's because you can't see the camera anymore. I'm like, you're making me, you're leaving me hanging in the most awkward of positions. I'm so sorry. So I just switched back elbows over to Twitch. With me. I switched over to Twitch, and I'm also like four or five seconds behind, too. So it's like. Oh, okay. Just, just bump elbows hmm. with me. I'm trying. We'll get it. We'll get it. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Right on. Well, right thanks on. for having me on, dude. That was right great. Right on. Had issues with right the on. video until I got on Wi-Fi. That might ah. be his problem. His problem. Oh, oh, because the that's someone else. Okay, yeah. Uh, could be me. That's why I mentioned new to Twitch. Also, not work. Okay. Yep. All right. Cool. Hey. Um, I guess we're about to be calling it quits because it's been two and a half hours. I've been drinking coffee all night. Some up and raring to go, but <laughs> uh, but I think it's about it's about that time. So, um, guys, fucking thank you. This has been so cool. Um, Andrew, thank you. This has been so cool. It was so uh, fun. What do you got going on? Like you guys, if I, I, I'm sure everybody's familiar in the chat, but in case there's anyone in the future watching on YouTube, uh, you got to check out Andrew's podcast, Amusement Sparks. It's a, it's a ton of fun. I'm on there with him all the time. So if you're a fan of my stuff, like it's, it's got the seal of approval. Um, <laughs> what are you guys doing over there? Anything fun coming up? Yeah. Um, well, okay. So we just today released a 1980s theme park that we designed. Um, and if you're not familiar with the show, each episode, a guest comes on who is a fan of something and we design a theme park around it. So uh, we did 1980s came out today. Three weeks from today will be Universal Monsters. And then after that, it's either going to be another like horror or monster one because it's right after Halloween or it might be um, either Tokusatsu, which is like Japanese special effects like uh, Power Rangers and Godzilla stuff or Wes Anderson. Those are the other ones that are like in the tank recorded uh coming up soon Whoa, so yeah that's, that's cool a wes anderson theme park. i know right it, it's a weird one um i've been in a, a really good conversation on the wes anderson subreddit recently um just because i usually invade those little fandoms and start up conversations to get people's input for the episodes and it's it's a cool way to to generate a connection with with fans of that content because each episode of my show is about a totally different fandom so it's kind of kind of weird like fans of the show are shifting gears all the time. Like every single episode is a totally different fandom. So if you're not into that fandom, it's like, I got to find somebody who's into that. And uh, yeah, so Reddit's been really cool for starting those conversations. But uh, it's a fun show. It's all ages. Nathan's been on, I think, three episodes, maybe four. I don't know. I'm sure you'll be on more in the future too. Batman, uh, we like working together. Batman, yeah, Batman four. Nickelodeon. Batman, Nickelodeon, Jurassic Park, and Donkey Kong. Yeah, so four already, man. Yeah. Pretty and, cool. And more to come um as i said this is my job now so uh we'll be doing more self radio lives i really hope we'll have andrew back uh very soon 
Um, me and Brianna are trying to set up episode two right now. So uh, we may actually be able to do episode two this week. Keep your eye on our social media. I know it's weird not having a schedule. I know it would be better if I just had a schedule. I'm working on it. Maybe you will try to make it happen. But I'm going to try to do this often enough, at least if I don't have a schedule, that it won't matter as much. But me and Brianna are talking about doing episode two. Uh, if you listened to the most recent episode of Sylph Radio, a Pokemon podcast, which if you guys are new to Sylph Radio Live and you haven't, please check it out. I put a ton of work into those, and um, I think you guys would really enjoy them if you enjoyed this. Uh, me yes. and Brianna regular self radio guest hosts are going to be uh, uh hopefully in our second episode we're going to do a little bit of gameplay but we're also going to take a look at the lion king play that i mentioned in the newest episode of self radio that uh, i was a part of in middle school <laughs> so that could be a lot of fun or it could be a terrible train wreck of a disaster but I think that's going to be really cool. And uh, you guys can let us know whether you think a lot more of this experimental variety show stuff is, uh, is, a, is a go or a no. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll be happy to hear from you either way. But, yeah, uh, secretroommultimedia.com. As it says, I'm pointing in the wrong direction. I keep doing that. As, <laughs> as it says up there, uh, that's the home base you can find. I've got a bunch of podcasts, Fairpoint Podcasts, Sylph Radio Podcast, uh, Riddle Me This Batman Podcast for any Batman fans out there. we got a Jurassic Park YouTube series, even comics and stuff. And uh, we're planning on doing more and more and more of all of this content. Like I said, I lost my job recently, so I'm treating this. I I'm no longer – I said I was unemployed earlier. I'm not unemployed. I'm self-employed. I'm not self-employed. I'm employed by the 18 wonderful people over at our Patreon that are currently paying me my only source of income right now. Thanks, guys. You guys rock. I'm going to start reading your names on Sylph Radio Live next episode because I don't feel like looking them up right now. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for being in the chat. That really, really made it a, a blast to be on. This Fuck. has been great. Yes. Thank you, Sentinel Red. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Aaron. Is there anybody in the chat that I'm forgetting? Blakers. SFF Blakers. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Thanks, Blakers. And the baby. Pika and Pika. the baby. Thanks to the baby. Uh, you are our I mean, future. I don't want to be derogatory. Sorry. Is baby problematic? I don't know. Baby? No, I, th I think that's politically correct. <laughs> I don't know. You, do, you start toddling around then. Are you a toddler at two? I don't know. Yeah, Depends on the individual. Toddler is more problematic. It's like, can You're you right. not can you not define me on my ability to walk? I'm still learning. Like, how about we don't like identify me with this one thing that I haven't mastered yet? I'm pretty right. good at babbling. Can we call me a babbler? Because I've or... fucking mastered that. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> It is. Uh, to the two-year-old, I don't know if you're still watching. It's probably past your bedtime, but I also know if you're two, like, you probably, like, you don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> my sincerest apologies. I'm sorry. I I I'm sincerely sorry. Like, uh, by the time you're old enough to, like, go rewatch this or something and, like, look back, I don't know if Donald Trump's still president by this point. I'm fucking sorry. Like, and I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry we all voted for Biden if that's the case too like I'm sorry either way bro dude she's printing faster <laughs> than me now um, to be clear bro was not a misgender I'm not sorry for that I always use it ironically to refer to anyone of any gender uh, don't be a Karen alright <laughs> cool hey. Thanks, guys. No, sincerely. Um, this has been so fun. I had a fucking blast. I hope you guys had a blast. I hope when I look back at this video that's three fucking hours long that it holds up uh, and is entertaining throughout. Thanks, guys. Andrew, thank you. Thanks for having me on, man. This is fun. We'll do yeah. this again. Thank you. Um, we don't have a closing theme, so this is it. I guess... I guess this is goodbye. I'm no good at goodbyes. Uh, <laughs> I'll miss you guys. Hit, hit us up on social media. Um, keep an eye on our Instagram or our Facebook. Or um, I, I, I don't know if there's a way to get us a hold of us on Twitch. You can try that. Like, if you, I want to make sure I'm accessible to people who don't have 
uh, Instagrams or Facebook. So YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks. Please subscribe and all that. And uh, later. Lates, guys. Lates. Bye. Lates. Bye.